Coming up next live is the Liberty Bowl here on ESPN. And this is Marcus Crandell, who broke many of Jeff Blake's passing records at East Carolina. So he'll be slinging it next against Stanford. East Carolina and Stanford in the Liberty Bowl coming up next. We'll be back. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to Memphis, Tennessee, and ESPN's presentation of the 1995 Liberty Bowl. The number one story in college football this year is the fairy tale season of Northwestern. They'll run for the Roses New Year's Day. Story number two, Stanford, a legend retired, replaced by a man with no head coaching experience. Well, so much for experience. Tyrone Willingham's Cardinal turned things around. He's Pac-10 Coach of the Year with a high-scoring offense. The Pirates of East Carolina have been down this road before. In last year's Liberty Bowl, quarterback Marcus Crandall had his problems. Coach Steve Logan's squad fumbled, stumbled, and generally struggled mightily against Big Ten bully Illinois. But in 95, ECU played with the big boys, beating Syracuse in West Virginia. And today, the goal is to settle up some unfinished business. The Pirates did not look good in the Liberty Bowl last year. They are back again. They're one of the outstanding independent teams in the nation, and they take on a power out of the Pac-10. It's Stanford and East Carolina. I'm Bob Carpenter. Welcome to Memphis. And it was East Carolina finishing the season on a very strong note. They won five in a row and six of their last seven. Stanford got off to their best start in 44 years and then hung on to go 7-3-1. and one. So, Mike Mayock, we usher in the Tyrone Willingham era out in Palo Alto. He waited 17 years for his chance to be a head coach. His quarterback, Mark Butterfield, waited four years to take those snaps. You know, Butterfield's really a great story. Tempted only 51 passes in the prior four years combined. But what I like, he's gotten better and better each week. He's known as a great passer, but at 6'4", 220, he's a lot quicker than he looks. Now, despite his great passing stats, they're a better football team team when they run the ball effectively. They have two tailbacks, Anthony Bookman, Mike Mitchell. They've accounted for over 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. And Bob, what I like about it is they have the luxury of two excellent tailbacks. None of them liked it when they were picked last preseason in the Pac-10. They went on to finish fourth, overachieving and doing so. Now, Steve Logan of ECU looking for national respect. You'll get it when you have a quarterback like Marcus Crandall. You know, I've seen Marcus Crandall live. I've seen him in practice and I've seen him on tape and I can honestly tell you that when the comparisons to Jeff Blake are absolutely realistic he has that innate natural athletic ability that separates him from the rest of the crowd. Now how about his fullback Jarris McVale? Well he beats you with his versatility. He's rushed for over 900 yards. He's caught 38 passes. He's the guy that takes the pressure off quarterback Crandall. Well speaking of pressure it is the postseason and often turnovers and special teams decide the issue and with that in mind let's go down to the sideline and Sam Crenshaw. Thanks a lot, Bob, and hi, everybody. When we talk about the Stanford Cardinals, special teams are indeed extra special. They are second in the nation in kickoff returns. And leading the way of the sophomore, Damon Dunn, over 27 yards per return. His tag team partner, the senior Marlon Evans, he's just a shade below 27 yards per return. The other side of the coin, the kicking game, Eric Abrams, the all-time leading scorer in the history of Stanford football. Should it come down to it, Coach Tyrone Willingham won't hesitate to go to his main man. All right, Sam, and a couple of teams that are thousands of miles apart. Stanford comes roaring from the West Coast out of the Pac-10 against East Carolina. We'll set the lineups and get the Liberty Bowl kicked off in a moment. East Carolina sold 12,000 tickets for this game. They had 14,000 here last year. There's a sea of purple and gold on the opposite side as they come roaring from Greenville, North Carolina. Enrollment 17,000, and there's Stanford and their coach Tyrone Willingham, 42 years old today. He's been an assistant in some great programs around the country and in the NFL with the Vikings for three years where they won two NFC Centrals and went to the playoffs three times under Dennis Green, the former Stanford coach, one of many Stanford coaches that have gone on to have success in the National Football League. Steve Logan is in his fourth year at ECU, used to be a teacher at Union High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's how his coaching career got started. He didn't even play football at TU. 
and he's worked for John Cooper, Jimmy Johnson, Bill McCartney, Bill Lewis, and now he's the head man. And he's even had a few offers from teams around the country, but he's decided he wants to stay with the purple and gold in Greenville. They are a very interesting football program. Stanford won the toss, and the Cardinal will elect to receive. They will move from our right to our left. This is the 37th annual Liberty Bowl, and Mike, you were here last year when things kind of blew up in the faces of the Pirates. They were beaten soundly by Illinois 30 to nothing, although it was only a 6 to nothing second half. You know, it's kind of interesting. They got away from what they do best, which is create turnovers on defense and protect the ball on offense. And the coaches will tell you in private that they thought the kids were a little too tight coming into this game. Stanford's first ever appearance in the Liberty Bowl. That's Damon Dunn, their all Pac-10 kick returner. He's back there with Marlon Evans. Chad Holcomb will let it fly for the Pirates of ECU. At the six yard line, it will be Marlon Evans. He'll make a cut. He will get beyond the 35 yard line. Chuck Ingram takes him down on the special teams tackle after a 31 yard return and Mark Butterfield the senior out of Antioch California a fifth year senior a reserve for four years and all he did this year was complete 58 percent of his passes Anthony Bookman plays behind him he's averaging almost five yards a carry Selena's a good one out of Connecticut. Mark Harris is one of their all time leading receivers with 107 catches in his career. And the second man through is Anthony Bookman and that quickly Stanford is out to midfield. And they work behind a very good offensive line. They've got three all league performers in the front. Jeff Bucky was first team all Pac-10. And then T.J. Gaynor and Brad Badger both were honorable mention. And don't forget Nate Parks is backed up by Jeff Wilson a sophomore out of Alabama who can back up really almost anybody on that offensive line. On first down Butterfield with lots of time and a little look in pattern to the fullback Adam Salina with Marvin Burke taking him down for ECU. East Carolina plays a multiple 50 defense. Lorenzo West, their defensive tackle with 12 sacks in his career. They play a lot of people at linebacker, led by Mark Libiano, a three-year starter, and he's the emotional leader back there. And then they've got the Hart twins, Darren and David in the secondary, but Emac is the man who makes most things happen for ECU. Anthony Bookman on the carry, and it was David Hart from free safety on the tackle in the first minute of the game. It's a good start for Stanford. Come out of the box with Bookman right out of the shoot for 12 yards on the first play, then they come back with the tight end. Now watch the block here, bottom of your screen. There it is right there, Selena on the strong safety blitz. Good job picking up the blitz. Anthony Bookman approaching 1,500 yards in his career in this appearance today. On second down and seven. And straight ahead go the Cardinal down to about the 32, maybe the 31. And that time it's Mike Mitchell who backs up Bookman at the running back spot. Mitchell's a six foot junior who goes 210 out of Phoenix. Same situation on that play. They had Morris Foreman, the outside linebacker, blitzing from the backside. So you can see today, Bob, they're going to come after you. Watch number seven coming from the backside. Just gets in the play late. Last two plays, both have been outside blitzes. Third and three. Comella, the motion man. And the Pirates stack it up pretty well. Mike Mitchell, the carrier. First man there. The middle linebacker, Marvin Burke who's third on the team in tackles coming into this game with 91. He got some good help from the outside linebacker. Actually, the rush end, Aaron Black. Well, that was a good job flowing to the football by Marvin Burke, who you see right there. Very physical inside linebacker. Compliments Libiano very well. Eric Abrams. This will be a 50-yard attempt right in the middle. Steve Frost, the snapper. Josh Madsen, the holder. And it is off to the left. He had the distance. He just couldn't knock it through. Abrams has a 50-yarder against Utah this year. 
So Stanford moves the football fairly well, does not score, and the Pirates take over when we come back. The Liberty Bowl is brought to you by FedEx. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, our most important package is yours. And by Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. Graceland is one of Mike Mayock's favorite Memphis stops. Let's go, the former let's go, Stanford. Come on, let's go Elvis Mansion, and we Thanks are lot, here Bob. at the Liberty Bowl. You know that was supposed to be your gig yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Liberty Bowl seat 62,000. Good crowd on hand. Lots of folks from East Carolina, and Stanford will set up their offense against this very versatile pro set of ECU. Very Marcus important. Grando leads the way. Very important for them to get off to a good start, unlike last year. And Stanford breaks out of their defensive alignment rather late, trying to keep Grando from snuffing things out. He will go with a fake, and he will run it to the right side. Out to about the 38-yard line. Marcus ran for 201 yards this year. Grando is the guy who makes the offense go with fullback Jarris McPhail really a one back set because they have so many people out there like the halfback a wide receiver Mitchell Galloway a junior who caught 46 balls this year and when they need short yardage they go the way of the right tackle Ron Suddeth an outstanding junior out of Miami they got a second and five coming up Crandall with play action a little swinger out to the right side and on the near sideline, it's Scott Richards, the tight end with the reception, his 34th catch of the year. Stanford plays a 4-3. Carl Hansen out of Houston, their sophomore. He's already honorable mention all Pac-10. He's got a great career ahead of him. Their linebacking core, just two of them, Chris Draft and Mike Hall. And that's because they go to the secondary with a nickel look all day long. Kwame Ellis, the right corner, and we'll see Corey Hill, the nickelback, playing an awful lot this afternoon. First down on the play, and the give is off the left side for Jarris McPhail, the fullback. You know, it's interesting, Bob. Play selection right out of the shoot for East Carolina. They come bootleg, bootleg, and then they run the same play off bootleg right there. I think what they're trying to tell you right at the top of the show is that Marcus Crandall is going to be on the corner all day long. Just and they're a team that likes to run a lot of gadget plays. They'll do some interesting things with their <laughs> kicking game because yeah. they know their kicking game is not as good as that of Stanford. Don't go to the bathroom in punt formation. <laughs> Jason Nichols, the motion man, and a little swing out to the left side. Jarris McPhail got some good running room on the flight, and he is out of bounds at the 33 of Stanford. A 20-yard gain for ECU. Now that play was actually a lateral because he threw the ball backwards. Watch what happens here. It's a well-conceived screen. Jarris McPhail swings out, lateral to him. Now look at the big offensive lineman out in front of this. That's Gilray, 73. Good block up front by Wiggins, the center. And McPhail made the block because of the cut. That was McPhail's 39th catch of the year. Three wide receivers to the right. Now some motion to the top of your screen by Mitchell Galloway. And that one incomplete at the 25-yard line. Jason Nichols, the man Crandall was looking for, and good defense on the corner by Leroy Pruitt. How good a hit was that by Leroy Pruitt? Mm. You know, they consider Pruitt and Corey Hill their quiet playmakers, as opposed to Ellis, who gets excitable and jumps up and down on the other side. But that time, Leroy made plenty of noise with the hit. Three-step drop, just a quick slant, and a great reaction and close on the football. Good hit by Leroy Pruitt. Second down at the 33. No backs in the backfield. Yeah, that's Richards, Watch the tight, the tight end. end. Watch tight end. There it goes. Ball overthrown. In the area of Jarris McPhail, Stanford with that nickel look. You know what they did, though, Bob, is they inverted the tight end and the running back. They put McPhail up at tight end, and they inverted the tight end. Now, look, in the backfield right now, they went motion out, and here's the tight end, who's really your tailback, goes right down the seam. Number 23, McPhail, takes off down the seam, and the pass is overthrown. Little trick play trying to invert the tailback with the tight end. East Carolina, 36% on third down this year. Crandall. And 
not time enough for Daryl Jones to get outside for that one. Good penetration by Stanford. And they force ECU into fourth and long. Now, as opposed to Stanford, this is a tough part of the field for East Carolina because they don't have a field goal kicker that can attempt a 50-yard kick. So it's almost identical, Bob, to where Stanford was with the 50-yard attempt. Yep. But if you're East Carolina, you either go for it or you punt the football. Chad Holcomb's longest field goal this year, 42 yards. And they will go for it. This is, this is where they like to move the quarterback in the pocket and let him have some, make something happen. Nichols the motion to the near side. That's where Crandall looks. It's two Nichols at the 30, but well short. Wrestled out of bounds after only a four-yard gain by the nickelback, Corey Hill. But the play was made because of the force up the field by Kwame Alice, who forced them to get rid of the football before he wanted to. Watch right on the corner. Corner blitz number eight right there is picked up, but because he keeps outside contained, the ball is released too early. No shot at a first down. Great job defensively by Tyrone Willingham, Stanford squad. His defensive coordinator, Bill Harris, who's on the field with him today, has to be pleased about that sequence. Billy told us he wants to be on the field so his mom can see him on TV. First down at the 30 as the Cardinal takes over. And a flag flies. Flag, flag, flag on the flag. Courtney Mozzie Jr. leading Ball start on Stanford will move the ball back inside the 25 yard line. Willingham out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. He's a native of that area, which, by the way, is only 60 miles from Greenville. His team is the least penalized team in the Pac 10. Butterfield with lots of time out to the right side and a tough ball grab there about the 26 yard line by Mike Mitchell and the man they call Emac Emmanuel McDaniel closed on him from the field corner position. Well coming up on Sunday New Year's Eve at 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN it'll be the best of our Sunday conversations candid personal interviews with all the big names in sports from the past year. Great series and you'll see the best of Sunday on ESPN. Second and 13. Butterfield with a little screen pass. It's Mike Mitchell again. And Morris Foreman from the outside linebacker, the field linebacker position, out there to make the stop after an eight-yard game. Good play call. Second and long. Stanford featuring their one back package the one back being Mike Mitchell they will throw to the tailback stems inside now he's going to release out to the flat Bat Brad Badger 78 makes the key block right there good job on second down third down and five now for Stanford they were 43 percent during the season on third down and they almost always pass from this yardage the ball is intercepted and it's going to be a touchdown for ECU Darren Hart with the pick Tyrone Willingham right there. Those are the kind of things his teams don't usually do. East Carolina came with their blitz package, forced the ball to be thrown before Butterfield wanted to. Great job by Darren Hart. His fourth interception of the year, the eighth of his career, a 37-yard touchdown. Chad Holcomb for the point after. Off Jason Shell's snap and Ed Crabtree's hold. And East Carolina comes up with one of the Hart twins. This time it's Darren. He went all the way. And East Carolina leads 7 0. Well, the Hart family now has 13 career INTs for East Carolina. And Mike, that may be the biggest of all time for the hearts they were two of the kids that came to play last year even though they got spanked they had 27 tackles between them now watch Butterfield the blitz is on he knows he has to get rid of it quickly the ball's tipped a little bit but a great one-hand catch by Darren Hart 
And we're going to take a look from another angle. Look at the top of your screen. Libiano and Foreman both coming from the top. Libiano breaks loose, and that's why the ball was thrown early. Lorenzo West might have gotten a piece, too. Looked like West, 45, definitely tipped that ball. And East Carolina gets a big break early. We talked about turnovers and special teams. Stanford misses a field goal from 50, and then the turnover, and ECU is on the board. Damon Dunn with the return. One of the best in the country. Watch out. Looking to get outside. Now he cuts inside, and he will be out to the 48-yard line. All Pac-10, number three in the nation, averaging 28 yards a return. He had a 91-yarder this year against San Jose State. This has been one of their most effective offensive weapons of the year because of field position. Watch his buddy, Marlon Evans out front, looking to make a block. There's the block. Just push him out of the way right there. And when you've got 4-4 speed in the big hole, that's what happens. 42 yards on the return. Stanford with great field position for the second time in three possessions. Off the left tackle and nothing much there. East Carolina plays a multiple 50 defense. Their defensive coordinator is Paul Jett, a Texas alum who's worked for Jimmy Johnson and some other very good programs. Anthony Bookman was the ball carrier. And that play right there, Mike, reflects the concern of Paul Jett. He said, if we can keep him to maybe two yards or so on first down, you're a lot better off against this Stanford high-powered offense. First down's always critical, but even more so in today's game. On second and eight, Butterfield to the near side. And unable to hold on was Anthony Bookman. The ball was thrown behind him. It looked like he was going to corral it for a moment. Not a very good pass by Butterfield. Two poor throws in a row, but there is a flag down. Yeah, back in the secondary. Now, East Carolina was in a two-deep zone on second and long, looking for them to throw the ball underneath. Ten and yards, previous spot, first down. Defensive holding. They probably got one of the bumped-up corners in that situation. McDaniel or Henry on the line of scrimmage trying to hold up the receiver. We mentioned earlier, Willingham, Pac-10 Coach of the Year. That's only the second time it's ever happened at Stanford. Let me guess the first. Who do you uh, think? Walsh, maybe? The, the obligatory genius, Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh in 1977. In his first tour of duty. <laughs> first down at the 40 of ECU for Stanford. East Carolina with a four-man front. It's Bookman, the motion man. And again, the Pirates stack it up well at the line of scrimmage. That time, it was the fullback, Adam Salina, a junior, out of ESPN country up in Berlin, Connecticut. And the clock runs down halfway through the first half with East Carolina on top with the Darren Hart interception. Look at, look at Salina right there, 6'3", 260. The only reason he wears a 38, Bob, is because he has to. I mean, he's, he's carried the ball 21 times in 11 games coming into today. And every tackler, every tackler can still feel those carries. Butterfield, good throw, a little bit high, though. Oh, good and a hit. good hit on Manning. Brian Manning, who's caught 103 passes in his career, he just got a taste of the other half of the Hart family. David got him that time. You know, I'd like to see this again and see whether or not there's any possession here. Curl pattern, this is Butterfield's best throw of the day. Steps into it, good protection, deep curl. Now, let's see if he comes down with it. I thought he came down with a football. Vicious hit by David Hart. Butterfield, three out of five for 21 yards, and now with three wide receivers, Stanford faces a third and seven, down by seven early. A blitz. Butterfield with a little look in. There's nothing inside. There to make the play, Travis Darden, the nose guard. Brian Manning, the flanker, tried to cut back against the grain, and he had 6'2", 258 waiting for him. At least that's what Travis weighed when he came on campus. He's a freshman, and he's up to 278 already. But the thing is, he's still carrying it well. That's the important thing. And this time, from the 35, they're going to punt instead of a 52-yard field goal attempt. 21 times this year, Kevin Miller's put the ball inside the 20. He's averaging 37 yards a kick. Here's where you watch for fake in this kind of field position. Fourth down and five. He will boot it. He'll pooch it. And the ball will hit at the one and go on into the end zone. 
Bob, that only nets them 15 yards on the punt. I'm surprised they didn't try a field goal. 35 yards on the Kevin Miller kick. Early, it's East Carolina coming up big with a turnover and leading 7-0. Yeah, welcome to River City. We're in the <laughs> capital of the Mid-South, Memphis, Tennessee, and Steve Logan feels very much at home here. His team was here last year, and they finally got some points on that turnover after being shut out last year. This is their fourth bowl game as a Division I team. On first down, nothing much happening from their own 20. Jarris McPhail, the fullback, is the ball carrier. Their three previous bowls were the 78 independents when they beat Louisiana Tech. They were at the peach in 92 when they, in a thriller, beat NC State. And then last year, the shutout. Steve has fond memories of that game in 1991 with Jeff Blake at the quarterback position. They had 25,000 fans visit Atlanta for that one. Three wide receivers on second and ten. Comes motion. It's the tight end Richards. He'll do some blocking on the left side. Cutting back to the right side and finding good running room is Jarris McPhail. Averaged about five yards a carry this year and scored five touchdowns. He broke one for 70 yards early in the year against Central Michigan. And that time he gets 11. You know, when you watch a great back, they all have that innate cutback ability. Watch what happens here. Stretch play to the wide side. There comes the block behind. So Mike Hall can't make the tackle. Then you accelerate into the open field. All great backs I've ever seen have that ability to cut back. First down at the 31. He played 10 games, so he averaged 91 yards every time out. Out to the left flank. There's some room out there for Daryl Jones across midfield and down to the 43 of Stanford. A redshirt freshman out of Rockledge, Florida. Good job on the read by Marcus Crandall. The outside receiver ran a slant. The inside back, which is Daryl Jones, is going to go out into the flat. And Leroy Pruitt's going to lose contain. Watch right out here. Pruitt's caught inside. Nobody's there. Safety, Leo Swinton's got to come over the top. That's a big play. 28 yards on that little swing pass. Randall with a reverse. And it looks like they want to throw it. There's nothing downfield. And Jason Nichols, the flanker, is tackled right at the line of scrimmage or so. Leroy Pruitt came up from left corner. So they threw a gadget out there, but they could not get it done. You know, this team has about six high school quarterbacks <laughs> on their offense. And what happens here? Here comes the pitch. Number one, Jason Nichols was a high school quarterback. He's going to try and get Larry Shannon deep. But Kwame Ellis does a great job. He's got Shannon covered. Nothing doing. Yeah, and there's the man who made them all ex-quarterbacks, Mike. <laughs> That's right. Marcus Crandall said, hey, baby, this job is mine. So they're all playing other positions now. Jarris McPhail on the quick opener. And just about back to the original line of scrimmage. That was a second and 12. So they'll be faced with third and long with the clock running under four minutes first quarter. You know what's interesting is Steve Logan, the East Carolina coach, is a huge Bill Walsh disciple. So what happens is here they're running the Bill Walsh offense, the Stanford offense, <laughs> where Stanford's more of a pro set under Tyrone Willingham. Now the backs are split. Randall sitting in the pocket. Oh, he had him. Under throwing Larry Shannon, his split end. Uncharacteristic bad pass by Marcus Crandall. Larry Shannon was open on the post cut backside. Shannon and Troy Smith shuttle in at that split end position and run a lot of plays in from the sideline. Watch what happens from our end zone camera. You're going to see back to the left side of the screen. He's got Shannon, who's got his man beat by mm. about three yards, and it's underthrown. Matt Levine. The punter, a sophomore, he will drop it inside the 10. It'll be downed at the six-yard line. The man to get there was E.J. Gunthrope on special teams. Number six, a 38-yard kick. And Mike Mayock, they are not tight this year. No butterflies in their stomachs so far the way they're playing here. 
Another great ESPN2 program coming up for you on New Year's Eve at 8.30 Eastern Time. It's the NASCAR Marathon. Jerry Punch will take you through 30 hours of fast-paced, exciting NASCAR racing from the 1995 season. All day, New Year's Day, after it gets underway on New Year's Eve. Stanford on first down. Near side, Mike Mitchell. Line of scrimmage was the seven, and he'll get maybe a half yard or a yard coming out to the near side. That's the, the old Green Bay sweep right there. Steve Logan has seen that before. Pull both guards, try and get your tail back out behind them. Their defense has done a good job against Stanford. Stanford, most of their big yardage came their first couple of possessions. Their right. last two, they haven't had much on first down. So far, advantage offense, though, on first down. Second down and nine here from the eight. And a good grab from behind by Travis Darden on Mike Mitchell. And the freshman nose guard out of Kelford, North Carolina, has come up big twice over. You know what's interesting? We found out last night that Stanford will always run away from their tailback. So what East Carolina is going to do is slant the line this way and watch what happens. Okay, here comes the slant. They get into the middle of the holes. Nowhere for Mitchell to go. That's good game plan by the coaching staff. Third down and 10. They lost a yard on the play. Back to the original line of scrimmage at the 7th. He'll drop into the end zone. He was touched. Now he'll tuck it away and run out to about the 11 yard line. <laughs> Lorenzo West almost had himself a safety there. Good job by Butterfield stepping up into the pocket. Now the pressure is going to come from number 45 down at the bottom of your screen. He'll defeat the block of Selena. But good job by Butterfield stepping up inside. And remember we talked at the top of the program. A little quicker than he looks for a big fella. 6'4", 220. Steps up. Tuck it away. Kevin Miller will kick from his own goal line. Jason Nichols is at midfield for East Carolina. Barring the mistake, they're going to have great field position here. At his own 49. At the 45 of Stanford. He'll get about six on the return after a 38-yard kick. And ECU can be knocking on the door here in a hurry again as we go down to a minute 15 remaining in the first quarter of play. Steve Logan, like Tyrone Willingham, also 42 years of age. His fourth year. If he wins today, he'll be back to the 500 mark. Seven and five two years ago. Excuse me, last year after going two and nine two years right. ago. Well, that was got coming. the Liberty Bowl last year. Now they go right. eight and three this year. And that was coming off that 11 and one season, that Peach Bowl you talked about earlier, back in 91. At the 45 yard line. Crandall. For Nick Fail. Stanford's front of Jason White, Pete Swanson, John Hebert, and Carl Hansen doing a good job there. Now Logan is one of the, the better young coaches in the country, and he makes no bones about the fact that he's an offensive coach. I was at practice with him the, on Thursday, and when the defense was practicing the first team defense. He was chatting with me like he had no care in the world. But when the offense got out there, I was non-existent. He was coaching Marcus Crandall. He was quote, watch out here. Trick play. There it is. Watch it now. Watch it right up the middle. Crandall, number 82. Ball carrier off the left side. Mitchell Galloway. That looked like a rugby scrum breaking up, and then all of a sudden somebody came out with the football. I saw this on tape. They've done this before, and he, believe it or not, Crandall will ha hand it through the legs of Galloway, who's hiding behind his offensive line right in here, okay? He takes it. He fakes there. The ball's already been handed to Galloway back here. Nobody knows where it is. Now he goes. Look at it. 13 yards on the play. <laughs> ECU is one of the few teams, Mike, that we use the Telestrator over live action. <laughs> and replays while they're rolling. Roll it out, and it's a little bit too far down inside the 15-yard line. The intended receiver there, Sean Richardson, who backs up Scott Ed Richards at the tight end. But they got the matchup they wanted if you're ECU. You've got your tight end, Richardson, on inside linebacker, Mike Hall, who's really just a run blocker. 
Crandall on the corner, man-to-man -man coverage. The ball's just slightly overthrown. Yep. Good, fairly good coverage for an inside linebacker, but once again, Mark is just a little bit too much on that ball. Yeah, and he's four out of nine for 55 yards. He would be the first to tell you he should be six out of nine. That's right. And he'll get there, believe me. Second down and ten. Galloway going one way, then the other. Crandall out to the left side. Ball pulled down by the fullback, Jarris McPhail, who caught 38 balls during the regular season. He's a fullback who does a lot more than just run and block. Yeah, he's a fullback in name only. In this one-back offense, he's really a tailback with the wide receivers and the H-back. What I like about this offense is they try to get five men out whenever they can, which means you only have five guys blocking plus your quarterback. So it puts a premium on Crandall being able to make a quick read and deliver the football. Final play of the first quarter coming up on third and three. Shotgun. Crandall took a moment to get the handle. He waits, he throws, and it's dropped down around the 12-yard line by Linwood DeBrew. That will end the first quarter. Fourth down coming up for East Carolina. But on the Darren Hart interception at the 846 mark, they take a 7-0 lead in the first 15 minutes of the 95 Liberty Bowl. Steve Logan's quarterback, Marcus Crandall, almost mishandled a little shotgun snap a moment ago. Sam Crenshaw, how's his left hand doing? Gosh, we don't know, Bob, but we do know this. We found out that he broke a bone in that hand back against Central Michigan early in the season. The next week against Illinois, they went to the shotgun because he couldn't take a snap. It has remained wrapped ever since, and we'll see if it affects him at all during this game. He's not in there on fourth and three. They will send out four guys and bring in the field goal team. It'll be... A 40-yarder for Chad Holcomb, whose longest of the year is 42. Now we'll call it a 41-yarder. He's only two for four from this distance, so this is a little longer than he'd like to go. They tried to draw him off sides. Yep, that would have given him a first right. down on fourth and three. Now we'll see what happens when they back it up. But you know what, Bob? It's tough to fool these guys from Stanford. You know, they've all got the 3-8 cube yeah, and everything. Right. What, are they going to jump ball. off sides? Delay of the game on the offense. Five yards. Fourth down. Now, this makes a very difficult decision for Steve Logan. He took a little bit of a chance there. Now, we must note the flags are blowing He's at the call. backs of ECU. Look at him. He's, he wants a timeout. All of a sudden, they go from fourth and three to fourth and eight. And you're really outside his makeable field goal distance. Old Glory is pointed toward the goalposts <laughs> where they would be kicking this field goal. Old Glory better blow real hard if Chad wants to make it for 46. Well, last year, East Carolina came here with high expectations. They were beaten soundly by Illinois, the Big Ten, 30 to nothing. It left a very bitter taste, and now here they are back in the bowl one year later. What the unfinished business is, is to get back here and play the game the way that we should have played it. East Carolina football, which is smart, crisp, sharp, uh, well coached, and, uh, and I think, uh, I'm sure hoping that we do that, I, I really am. We've been sitting on it for a year. It, it left a bitter taste in our mouths. They settled for a 7-5 and five record, and you know the interesting thing, Mike, they've got 15 wins the last two years. That's more than any other school in North Carolina or South Carolina. Right. You're talking about Duke, North Carolina, NC State, Clemson, Clemson and the South Carolina, Carolina Gamecocks. Right. You know what I think just happened there, why Logan's so upset, is that the 25-second clock was never started, and because of that, it's going to cost his team not only five yards, but a timeout. Some real confusion down there right now. Fourth down and eight. The ball sitting just inside the 29-yard line of Stanford. While the officials sort things out, we'll take a break for the 1995 St. Jude Liberty Bowl in Memphis. East Carolina on top by seven. is brought to you by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? And by Jeep, maker of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. 
with Mike Mayock and Sam Crenshaw. Bob Carpenter from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. It'll be a 46-yard field goal attempt for Steve Logan's kicker, Chad Holcomb. Jason Shell, the snapper, Ed Crabtree, the holder. Left hash. And it is in there. How about that? He just got it over. His longest of the year. A little uh, extra adrenaline flowing for the bowl game. And it's 10-0 East Carolina. Hey, how about Chad Holcomb? We talked about the special team's edge towards Stanford. Yet Holcomb makes a career-long 46. And on the other side, Abrams misses from 50. So edge right now, ECU. You know, an interesting thing... Uh, Interesting thing to do. Here's the kick. Good hold. Little wind behind him. That's just a solid kick. Splits the middle. You know what I liked? Watch Logan with the stopwatch right here. He knows that he's got to get the ball off in 1-2 to 1-3 so it won't be blocked like what he saw. Well, his best ever. 42 against Cincinnati, his previous. He's a junior out of Smyrna, Georgia. And he came up big for a 10-0 lead right there. Now he'll tee it up. And we'll see how Stanford reacts to being down 10-0. This is a Stanford team that feels very much at home on the road. They were 5-1 and one away from Stanford Stadium this year. They're only lost by one at number 11 USC on the 4th of November in what was described by many as one of the most thrilling games of the year on the West Coast. I watched that tape, and I'll tell you what, just, just on the tape, you could feel the excitement. It was a great football game. Don't forget the special teams of Stanford. Damon Dunn is back there. He ripped one off earlier for better than 40 yards. Marlon Evans back there as well. At the eight-yard line, it'll be Damon Dunn. He will make a little slant to the outside. Ball is on the ground. It's a pile up at the 43-yard line. Wow. There's a ball fight. in there somewhere. <laughs> Look at him fight. The Pirates say they've got it, There's and they do. <laughs> and special teams betray Stanford again. Big, big turnaround, 10 nothing, and then all of a sudden, once again, the special teams tilting the field towards East Carolina. A big surprise in this football game. Looked like Bernard Lackey got it after a big hit by Chuck Ingram. Here comes Dunn. Now watch him carrying the football in his right hand rather loosely. There's the strip. Right there on the strip is the key to the game, and now comes the fight for the loose ball. East Carolina. Great field position at the 41-yard line of Stanford. Well, they try to strike quick here. The ball hits the official on a crossing pattern by Jason Nichols. Yeah, but that counts. He was the only one open. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why he's an official. He can't catch. <laughs> he had a lot of real estate in front of him, Mike. Watch right here. It's the back judge right to your screen. Crossing route. Side arms it out, bang, right in the elbow. Come on, big fella, you got to move quicker than that. Well, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. Second down and 10. We're only 28 seconds into the second quarter. Checking off at the line for the first time. Randall looking right all the way. Ball a little bit high. And it was Derek Batson, the senior out of Miami, trying to grab his 15th of the year. You know, Stanford does something a little bit unique on defense, and they play what's called a two-deep shell, where the two safeties line up deep, and the corners come up, and the quarterback can't get a pre-read. It makes it very difficult, and you won't see them doing as much audibling as they usually do. Randall has misfired on his last four passes. He faces third and ten here. Comes motion. It's the tight end, Richards. At the 30-yard line, ball is caught, and down to maybe the 28 is Mitchell Galloway, the H-back. He led this team with 46 catches on the year. That was the fourth best single season ever in East Carolina football history. Those catches covered 619 yards. You know, their best pass blocker is 61, top of your screen, Ron Sutton. Great feet, hardly given up a sack in two years. That's just an excellent job. 13 yards on that first down play. And there it is. 
Randall. Quickly to oh, ball almost picked off. Slanting in there was Kwame Ellis. That talented and very emotional right cornerback. I can't believe Kwame's not jumping up and down right now because well, he, he will do that after he makes a tackle, but this time he's a little bit disappointed. Kwame knows he should have caught the football. That's why he's not jumping up and down. In a game like this, when you're down 10 nothing, you get the opportunity to take it 60 yards the other way. You've got to catch the football. He had picked off two this year. Second down and 10. Here they come. Crandall gets it away quickly. Corey Hill defending on Jason Nichols. Nichols just a sophomore out of Norcross, Georgia. 85 career catches coming into this game. Number four on the all-time ECU chart. He'll go over 1,000 yards if he grabs a couple more today. Nice little pick play there, but covered well by the Stanford defense. Five yards. It'll be third and five. They're one out of four on third down so far. Here's where they like five-step drop. Cross motion creates trips. That's Galloway. Randall looking that way. Lots of pressure. Oh, he got it away, and that ball's got to be caught. Mitchell Galloway may have heard some footsteps, but he was beyond the marker, and that was a great job by Crandall of getting that pass away with Kwame Ellis right in his face. Boy, that just showcases the arm strength of Crandall off his back foot into the deep flat. Watch him throw it off his back foot. He sees the blitz coming, throws it right on the numbers and uncharacteristically by Mitch, by Galloway. Look at that, bad catch. They're gonna go on fourth and five. They were nine for 19 on fourth down during the regular season. Same thing, trips to the field. Randall pressured again, backwards to McPhail. And a good play in the backfield by number 45. That is Josh Manson, the free safety, 22 years of age. He served a Mormon mission in Northeast Mexico. And hey, if he can't get fired up for this game, who can? His fiance, Miss California, is in the stands. Well, look at the blitz, top of the screen by draft. Forced them to get rid of the football too quickly, and Matson makes the play. And Bob, that's twice they've gone for it on fourth down. Both times, Stanford's come with the heat, and both times it's forced Crandall to get rid of the football too quickly. Josh Madsen, a junior, at the age of 22. Anthony Bookman twisting and turning his way out to around the 38-yard line. You know, that's a big stop right there for Stanford. Let's face it, they just kicked a long field goal, made it 10-0, and they get the turnover on the ensuing kickoff. His defense did a great job right there, making the stop, no points on the board. Let's see if we get some momentum going back the other way. Stanford only 58 yards of total offense so far. Ten of that on the ground. So they'll go to their man, Bookman, again, and he is wrestled down by Marvin Burke, the middle linebacker, number 51. Now that's a situation where they didn't get the timing between the running back and the pulling guard, Ryan Waters. Watch 68 pulling right behind Celine. He gets caught up in the wash, can't get the block right there on 51 Marvin Burke, and that's why the play didn't work. Good job by Burke, bad timing internally little face mask there that wasn't called. Stanford 0 for 4 on third down today. This is third and one. Two tight ends, Greg Clark and Tommy Hansen. As the Wheaties say. Yeah, when we go Wheaties, they say. They go big here. Double tight, high formation. And you've got Selena in there helping out as well. <laughs> Adam Selena, 6'3", 260. Maryland straight ahead. Who could possibly stop him? That's the definition of inertia right there. You've got a large mass moving forward behind five other large masses. Can't stop him. Yeah, I saw 77. Jeff Bucky in there, the all pack 10. Left tackle, who could be a guard in the pros, they say. Starting his 34th consecutive game at left tackle. Yeah, he's a guy they'll kick down inside because you know what that position at left tackle means in the NFL. If you do it well, it means $3 million a year. First down, it's Bookman with good room outside across midfield and dragged down by David Hart, the free safety. For the first time today, East Carolina lost contain on the corner. 
Anthony Bookman this year had four 100 yard games at Washington State, Utah, Arizona State, and a season high 133 against San Jose State. He averaged 79 yards a game and made the second team all Pac 10. He's run it six times for 35 yards today, almost a six yard average. Eight man front right now, 46 defense for Carolina. It's Mitchell. Out of bounds at the 40 of ECU. And that'll be a first down as Dwight Henry rode him out of bounds from the bench corner, the right cornerback position. Stanford starting to find a little home now in the running attack. And we talked at the top, Stanford's a better football team when they can run it. As a matter of fact, when they've rushed for over 140 yards in a game, they're five and one this year. So they want to run the football. First down at the 40 of the Pirates. A quick give to Mitchell. There were some shoulder pads popping on that one. Marvin Burke was making most of the noise, and he already has four tackles today. There's a little run blitz right there by East Carolina trying to plug up all the run holes. Watch Camella, the fullback, picks up the blitz. Good cut, but watch the hit by Marvin Burke. Wearing number 51, somewhat reminiscent of Mr. Butkus. <laughs> Out of Jacksonville. He's got a couple of sacks this year. He's a strong guy who can bench press way over 300 pounds. He just bench pressed a running back right there. Second down and nine. Butterfield with lots of time. And a swinger out to the right side for Mark Harris. We talked about Josh Madsen at the age of 22. Mark Harris is the old man of the Cardinal. He is 25 years old. He's married. He's played at South Utah State, Rick's Junior College, and he's been on a two-year mission. See right, what happens right here. It's a little option route. Harris does a great job. He's the possession receiver, fakes inside, comes back out. Good read both by the quarterback and the wide receiver. Now watch Bucky. We'll get a look at him a little later. Great shot on the pass block. They're down to the 25 yard line. And they will lose yardage. Good penetration. Mark Butterfield ends up with a football. Morris Foreman, the field linebacker, got in there, number seven. Now, two plays ago on that little option route, watch Bucky, number 77, move his feet, doing a good job with West, who's a much quicker defensive lineman than he is. Good job. Bucky, 6'5", 300, a senior out of Bakersfield. Well, to play left tackle in the pros, you've got to have the size of an elephant and the feet of a ballerina. He's got him. Loss of three, second and 13. Here come the Pirates. And there goes Butterfield. 81 is Mark Libiano, the three-year starter and the leader of this defensive team. This is an all-out blitz. That'll give him seven and a half sacks this year, Mike, and ten and a half for his career. Take a look at Libiano right there. He's coming up, and they're bringing so many people that he gets through with only a shoulder block by T.J. Gaynor. Blows right past him. Great job right there by Mark Libiano. How about third and 23 now? How about how many tackles Mark Libiano has? 371 the last three years and they play their backup linebackers a lot. He's not in there for every snap Butterfield Whoa. left sideline great looking ball inside the 10 yard line for Brian Manning Boy, I like that play out of the gun Little fake it looks like they're going to, to uh, Fullback right there Greg Camella on third and 23, they get 31 yards. A little play action right there to Camello. They roll the pocket. I like the call. E Number seven, Morris Foreman, the linebacker, bites on the out fake. Great job by Manny. This is a big series right now for Stanford. Got to get back in the football game. First and goal from the seven. Bookman looking outside, and he will get to the pylon did not quite get in they will mark him out just inside the one Dwight Henry sent him airborne this is their favorite play the old Green Bay Packers sweep they're going to bring both guards out in front of Bookman it's 
see right there, the lead guard. He's got the key block on the corner. Gets caught up a little bit, but he's going to catch right there. Marvin Burke, give him the corner, and it's almost a touchdown. Three backs, couple of tight ends. We got him packed in. And Greg Camella fails to get in. Might have lost a little ground. Marvin Burke and Morris Foreman did some bookending on him. And they will mark it back at about the one and a half yard line. This guy right there, nine touchdowns on the year because he's their short yardage back. But look at the flow right there. Marvin Burke, the Hart brothers, Morris Foreman, great job. It'll be third and goal from the one and a half. Little play action right here. the goal line. It's a touchdown for Adam Salina. He just slanted off the left side. Jeff Bucky and Ryan Waters gave him a little bit of breathing room, and Salina goes in for his first rushing touchdown of the year. That's correct that he had three during the regular season. That will be his fourth. And Stanford, with an impressive drive, gets on the board with 7.01 to go in the second quarter. Eric Abrams strokes it through. He's 34 out of 37 this year. And it's a brand new ball game with seven minutes remaining. Selena goes in. Willingham's got his TD. It's 10-7. Took the Cardinals a while to get untracked offensively, but a very impressive six-minute drive. Yeah. By far the best drive of the day so far for Stanford. And, and really the first sustained pass. drive we've seen by either team of the game, Mike, because of the turnover that got ECU at score. There's the block by Bucky, but an even better job of Camella coming in and chipping off on the guy that Bucky was blocking, and that's why Selena was able to get in the end zone. That and 260 pounds. Eric Abrams will kick it away for Stanford with the left footer. Mitchell Galloway and Daryl Jones back for the Pirates, who haven't had the football in a while now. To the near side. It's a good five yards deep. Mitchell Galloway will sit on that one. Coming up Monday and Tuesday on ESPN, a couple of special editions of the best college football show on television. Chris Lee and Craig preview the biggest college football bowl day of the year with a special look at the Outback Bowl following the telecast Monday. And then they're back to recap the bowl madness of New Year's Day. I'll look back at the college football season and a special look at the Fiesta. Tarico is in Tempe and we'll hear from him at halftime today. Seven minutes to go in the first half and ECU goes back to work offensively. Good running room on the outside for Jarris McPhail. And on first down, he will motor out to the 37 as they'll get 18 yards on that play. You know, if you play wide receiver for Steve Logan, in addition to catching the football, you've got to block people. Watch number one, Jason Nichols. McPhail wants to get on the corner, left side of your screen, right there. The guy that was on the ground was blocked by Nichols. That got him to the corner. Big play on first down, number one leading the way. And at the 38-yard line, Galloway, the motion man. And trying to get outside again, Jarris McPhail. He's got 437 speed in the 40. He'll go over 1,500 yards for his career if he has a good day here today. Had a 209-yard game this year against the Tigers of Memphis. You've got to give him some credit. That Memphis game was the last game of the year. He kind of battled through midseason with a fractured forearm, only missed one game. So I think the best is yet to come for this young man. You love it when it's second and two, don't you? Choice down. Crandall can do a lot of things here. A little bit of a low throw for Daryl Jones. Now, I've seen Marcus Crandall throw the football better. 
Matter of fact, I saw him at practice two days ago. I didn't think the left hand was a factor. Today, he's missed thrown two or three passes so far that, that very uncharacteristic of Crandall. Number one all-time passer at ECU with better than 5,700 yards. Today, he's seven for 18. Third down and two. We got their heavy set in the game right now. Nick Fail. Tough yardage on that right side. The marker is just beyond the 48-yard line. Jason White came from left end to stop him, the senior out of Boise. This is one of those situations where the spot is critical, and I think he's going to come up just a little bit short. And 33 there was Chris Draft, the linebacker, who is right with Jason White. I think what Steve Logan is thinking on this series, he's running the football more than he usually does. I think he'd like to run the clock down. We've got 6.31 left in the half. I think he's thinking, let's run the clock down, get a good drive, points on the board right before halftime. Looks like about a length of the football, maybe a little more short on fourth down. You've got 6.31 before halftime, Mike. You're up yep. by three. You don't have a great kicking game. And it looks like he'll go ahead and boot it away. Doesn't want to take a chance in his own territory after Stanford <laughs> but just remember, scored. But remember, be careful with the East Carolina special teams. Number seven, the fullback, Morris Foreman, who's also their outside linebacker, was a high school quarterback. He's right there. He has thrown one pass this year, complete for a first down. Where will the snap go? Oh, option. It'll go to him. He will run it. He will get the first down. He will get to the 30-yard line of Stanford. <laughs> nice call, partner. 22 yards on the fake. Hey, how much fun are these guys, huh? I want to watch these guys play every week. You know, I can see why some conferences don't want these guys. No, They're no. too dangerous. <laughs> Watch what happens here. Great job. Direct snap to the fullback. Here's the key. You've got an option. He looks like a high school quarterback. Gave him a little shake and bake. Turn it up, Morris. Great job for an outside linebacker. Gets a little glory here at the Liberty Bowl. Well, that's a little longer than his previous run against Southern Miss when he went two yards. <laughs> he added 20 on top of that. That was important. That's a great call by East Carolina head coach. First down at the 30. Crandall with a pump fake up the middle. And down inside the 10, just unable to squeeze it, was Larry Shannon. See, that's a big advantage there because Larry Shannon, 6 feet 6 with a 38-inch vertical leap. He's got to throw the ball in the air and let Shannon go get it. It's a throwback post. No safety there. That was advantage East Carolina. Once again, underthrown by Crandall. Stanford's tallest man in the secondary, Mike, is Josh Madsen at 6'2". Pruitt, Swinton, and Ellis are all under 6 foot. He had Ellis at 5'10 on him, and he's 6'6 with a 38-inch vertical. Throw it up in the air. Second down. Randall. There he is. Hits his big tight end this time. Scott Richards is a hard target to miss at 6'5", 251. A junior out of North Augusta, South Carolina. He's caught over 50 passes in his career, including 33 during the regular season. Now, this offense spreads you out horizontally pre-snap and then stretches you vertically, and then you get a little crease in there because people are flying deep to cover the deep guys. Great job. Well-conceived play. Richards, another one of those ex-quarterbacks. He was highly touted when he came to ECU. And a Division I basketball recruit, so you know he's an athlete. Now, Crandall's throwing to him. First down at the 15. And a diving grab down near the seven yard line. That's number 25, Derek Batson, the backup to Jason Nichols on the flank. They can beat you so many different ways. They have great skill position players. If there's one concern at East Carolina, it's their offensive line. But these skill position guys, five step drop, throw it on time. Kylie Wong almost got there, and it's a great catch by Batson. Crandall was seven for his first 18. Now he's hit two of his last three. He's nine out of 21 as he goes over 100 yards. Now, the tight end goes into the fullback position. This is a run, run set for them. On second and two. Checking off. Time out. We'll stop it with 4.56 remaining. And East Carolina has used its second timeout of the game. Critical possession. They want to increase that lead. We'll be back in a moment to the Liberty Bowl. 
ESPN is your home for college football. The Peach Bowl is coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's number 18, Virginia, and it's Ray Goff's last game at the helm of the Georgia Bulldogs. The Peach tonight. And here at the Liberty, Bob Carpenter, Mike Mayock, and Sam Crenshaw in Memphis, East Carolina, with a second and two coming out of the timeout with 4.56 remaining before halftime. But Crandall saw something he didn't like on that last one. That's why he checked out and called the timeout. He looks to the right. He throws it low and outside. Larry Shannon, the intended receiver, but it was a bullet into the turf, and there was really no chance to grab that one. Yeah, I'm not sure who he wanted that time. I'm not sure if he wanted Nichols or Shannon. He kind of landed in between the two of them. Now, we, here's a situation. It's third and two, but the ball's on the seven-yard line, so you can get a first down. They've got the heavy group in the ball game. Sapaniak, the linebacker, is in at wingback. There are no options. Great surge by the Stanford front, led by 75, Carl Hansen. And then John Heskins was right behind him. Kylie, Kylie Wong was in on it, too. He really made a good play. What, they're going to run option, which is very tough to defend down tight. Watch 13. He kind of blocked off by the official there. But 13, Kylie Wong fought off the block, made a tackle along with Hansen. 25-yard attempt coming up from Chad Holcomb. And they'll mark it a little back further. We'll call it 26. He had a 46-yarder earlier. And this chip shot is right through there. So the Pirates getting some help from their kicking team today. A couple of field goals, and they lead 13-7. Who would have thought coming into the game, we talked about the advantage Stanford on special teams, but what they've done, Steve Logan and his staff have done, is they've turned the tables because of the gadget play. And that's something that Steve Logan and his staff keep track of, Mike. Over four years, they have a list of every time they have faked, when it's been successful, when it has not, and it sure looked good this time. Well, how about this stat? In four years in East Carolina, Steve Logan's team has faked 21 punts, and they've been successful 17 times. Now it's 18 for 22. Pretty amazing. Not bad. Pretty amazing. Not bad. Logan has heard from some other football programs. He's told them, I'm not interested in leaving. He loves the spirit, and he loves the situation they're in in Greenville. He says there's two things you have to have to recruit players. you got to be on TV, and you got to have a bold time. They've got both. He wouldn't mind the conference, even though he's done a good job turning that around to his advantage. Marlon Evans. Slanting inside, taking a hit or two at the 25, maybe the 26. That's where Stanford will take over. We've got 4.02 remaining in the first half, and coming up at halftime, Mike Tirico in Tempe, Arizona. And let's go out west and check in with Mike. Mike okay, what's Carp, coming up. Oh, Bob, coming up at halftime, we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about, including news of the Sooners, a new coach for Oklahoma, the Big 12. Oklahoma's a part of it. It's been dominant in this bowl season. And about the Fiesta Bowl, the championship game, the matchup of defensive backs against wide receivers. Craig and Lee, join me at the half. See you then, Bob. All right, Mike, we look forward to that. Four minutes and two seconds of playing time from now. Butterfield out some play action. And that's a case where the wide receiver might have pre prevented the INT. Mark Harris got a hand on it, and he was outnumbered by the Pirates back there. Had uh, Brian Manning, their deep threat, running the deep post route, and coming in behind him was Mark Harris. You know, we haven't heard a whole lot of uh, Manning and Harris so far today. A little surprising. I think you're going to see him trying to work those guys into the game plan. Stanford has a great tradition of wide receivers. James Lofton, Tony Hill, Ken Marjoram. Gene Washington. They've had great throwers like Plunkett in Elway. Out to the right side. It took Bookman a while to find the handle. Emac. Emac was waiting. Out of Jonesboro, Georgia, a 5'10 senior who plays a lot bigger and a lot harder. 
You know, he's an interesting guy. He's a very, very aggressive defensive back. He's got 13 career interceptions, but he also occasionally will bite on that hitch and go or out and up. And you'll see them try and take a shot on him, I'm sure, later in the game. He had a streak this year of five straight games with an interception. It ended on November 4th against Army. Look out there here. Is. Bang. Third down and 10. Pirates were coming hard. Breaking one tackle was Greg Camella. And he's out across the 30-yard line. Aaron Black had an opportunity to make the play early and missed the tackle, but a good job by East Carolina sitting back, forcing the throw underneath from the long distance, forcing the punt. Yeah, they contained him well. It'll be fourth and five and a kicking situation for Kevin Miller, whose longest kick of the year is 58 yards. Jason Nichols is back for ECU just outside his own 30, which is unusual. Usually it's Morris Foreman, the outside linebacker, who's their normal punt return. Well, he's exhausted from that fake punt, <laughs> Mike. A low spiral, returnable at the 32. He'll jitterbug and get outside to the near side. And he'll get about eight yards or so. He's a little quicker than Foreman. That's why they like Nichols back there occasionally. 37 yards on the kick. Officially seven on the return. Well, it was sunshiny. It's a little clouder now. And now let's check in downstairs with Sam Crenshaw. All right, Bob, I'm here on the East Carolina sideline, and Petey the Pirates trying to get warmed up here. Because they just turned the heaters on. We got a total cloud cover right here. Temperatures are dropping. Looking to see the lights come on, actually. We'll see if that happens before the end of the half. <laughs> The forecast called for temperatures in the mid-40s by the end of the game today. Hey, all I know is Sam and I did a game in Orlando, and it was lightning and a half-hour delay, so we got a bad history together. I'm staying away from the two of you. First down at the 40. Randall with a quick hit to Jarris McPhail. And on first down, they'll get about seven. Number 23, Jarris McPhail. Once again, great cutback ability by McPhail. In behind the offensive line, doing a good job. Kevin Wiggins and Lamont Burns on that play. Well, McPhail's a reliable back during the regular season. He averaged almost five yards a carry. He's averaging four and a half today on 10 carries for 45 yards. Pretty soon they're going to try and get quarterback on the corner. Good pursuit from behind. That's Chris Draft, a sophomore out of Anaheim. Great athlete. He started the year as a reserve, became a starter in game two against Utah. He made 11 tackles that day. He's got six today. He's been in the lineup ever since. And how many inside linebackers do you see play start for the number two baseball team in the country as an outfielder? Yeah, That's Mark how Marquis. good an athlete he is. Mark Marquis and that outstanding Stanford baseball team ranked number two preseason. Seven. Randall steps up out to the right side. <laughs> Defender never did look for the football. That's why he's a linebacker. Great coverage, but but turn your turn your head there, Michael. That was Mike Hall, the fifth year senior out of Torrance, California. Now we talked about the shell. One, two, three, four. Two safeties, two corners. That's what they see every play. Watch the move at the snap of the ball. You see the movement into a different, completely different look, a three deep with a flat coverage. They're trying to confuse the pre-read of the quarterback, Randall. Great coverage right there by Mike, Michael Hall. Well, what Mike lacks in speed, he makes up in leadership. Back to the 18-yard line. It's Anthony Quickman on the return. Crack down there by number 14, Brian Bentley. 39 on the kick, a pretty good 15 on the return. And Stanford at its own 35 when we come back. On a suddenly cloudy day in Memphis, Tennessee, the 95 Liberty Bowl. East Carolina went out to a 10-0 lead. Stanford with a 69-yard, six-minute drive, got back in. Then ECU kicked the field goal. It's first down at the 34. Butterfield drills it. And the ball is caught by Greg Clark, the junior tight end. Now they got 23 balls during the regular season. No huddle. A minute 12 in counting. They had two plays called. 
got to keep it moving. They haven't used any timeouts yet. Butterfield goes to his safety valve on the left leg, but unable to twist toward the sidelines was Greg Camella. Darren Hart was all over him to keep him in and force them to stop the clock. Now, that, that's a situation where if you're Tyrone Willingham, you'd almost rather have your quarterback throw that in the 10th row so you don't have to waste the first down. Picking up one yard in the flat doesn't help. There's a guy that's really had a special season, Mark Butterfield. Mike Tirico is in Tempe, Arizona today with our Dodge Halftime Report coming up. He'll tell you about the new coach of the Sooners after Howard Schnellenberger's sudden resignation. Bowl highlights and some news from the Fiesta. Yeah, they've already started hyping the big game out there, Florida and Nebraska next week for yeah, number one. Wait a minute, Bob. You're, you're an Oklahoma guy, born and bred, live there now. I mean, who, who's the new coach? Let's break the news now, pal. I have no idea. I'm, I'm going to wait for Mike to tell us. You know what I'm amazed at is think about the guy down on the sidelines, Steve Logan, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep. Up and coming young offensive coach, great recruiter. Would seem like he'd be a pretty good fit for that program. Other names being tossed around, surprisingly, that of Larry Lacewell, a former Barry Switzer assistant. John Blake on Switzer's staff with the Dallas Cowboys. Jim Donnan was on that right. list, supposedly, before he took the job at Georgia. He's an impressive coach. When Glenn Mason decided to stay put in Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah, how about that waffle job, huh? That was something. I don't usually see that. Third down and one at the 44. The wow. Pirates stack it up pretty well. Marvin Burke is in there. Leading a crew against the quarterback of Stanford, Mark Butterfield. Morris Foreman, a part of that as well. I'll tell you, Burke and Libiano came real hard, real early. Did a nice job pushing the pile the other way. ECU fans boo as the officials give them first down yardage. Tough spot. Nose of the football just short of the 45. Butterfield with a pump fake. He's out of time. He drops the football. It's picked up by Travis Darden of ECU. That will be his third fumble recovery of the year. Roderick Coleman got a big hit. Interesting, Bob. We just talked about how Emmanuel McDaniel will jump on that hitch and go. That was the call, but McDaniel did a great job in the coverage. The pump fake, he didn't bite on it. That gave the line the time to get there. Coleman's first, knocks it loose. Good job right there. And Darden picks up a loose ball, as we mentioned, for the third time this year. The big fella got the paws down and grabbed it. And now in the final 40 seconds, a story of turnovers for Stanford. This is Crandall for East Carolina. Pulled down from behind in good fashion by Carl Hansen, the right end. Remember, only one timeout left because they had to burn two earlier. And he just used the third and fun. Butterfield having a frustrating day today. Steve Logan looking to take advantage of it. What a season, though, he's had. For four years, he watched Steve Stenstrom, who threw for over 10,000 yards, got his chance, and was a big reason the Stanford team overachieved. Picked to finish 10th in the Pac-10. They win 5-3 and three in conference play. Their only conference losses were UCLA when they led 21 to 7 at the half. That one hurt. They lost a thriller at USC. But you know what's interesting in the first half today, Bob, and that's the turnover story. We talked up front, East Carolina. We talked Stanford. East Carolina has been one of the most impressive turn takeaway giveaway teams in the country, especially the last five games where they're plus nine. That's the difference in today's football game. 19 seconds remaining. The other loss they had was against Washington. Butterfield paces. He wants his defense to get the job done here. Brandel looking down near the 10-yard line off the hands of Scott Richards. That surprises me. Scott Richards should have caught that football. Good route. He pushed off the linebacker, was there, and dropped the football. 
And I think he agrees with you, Mike. Yeah, you, you know, he's such a good athlete. I mean, he's put on, he, when he came to East Carolina, he was 6'5", about 215 pounds. He's now 6'5", 251, and still an agile kid. Should have caught the football. Third down and seven with 14 seconds remaining. A lot of time will burn off there. Down to eight seconds it'll go. You know what happens there? Galloway, number 82, did a poor job of helping his quarterback who had nowhere to go. Watch Galloway. He's covered right there by Kwame Ellis, standing on the sideline. Make a move up the field. Go somewhere. Don't stand right there. You're not helping your quarterback when he's scrambling at that point. Got to do a better job for Mitchell Galloway. 41-yard field goal attempt by Chad Holcomb, who's already hit twice today, including a career high. High snap. He's got another one. <laughs> He's in the zone, Carp. He was only 10 for 17 on the year. And the junior out of Georgia says, today might be my day. From 46, 26, and now 41 for a 16 to 7 lead, three seconds from halftime. Boy, is Chad Holcomb having a career day on a great afternoon to have one. Snaps a little high. Good job on the handle. And Holcomb just, just like that sweet seven iron. Stays down, follows through. It's good. You must hit low seven irons. <laughs> Three seconds remaining. I'm lucky to get it airborne. Chad Holcomb, two out of two from 40-plus today. And the turnover by Mark Butterfield pays off in three at the other end. Tyrone Willingham will have some halftime adjustments to make. And most of those adjustments might be taking care of the football. The opportunistic Steve Logan and his Pirates leading by nine. Three turnovers has led to 10 of their 16 points. Holcomb will squib it to the 16-yard line. Marlon Evans on the return. That'll do it for the first half. East Carolina goes out 10-0. Stanford comes back with a touchdown. A couple of Chad Holcomb field goals, and it's 16-7. Our Dodge Halftime Report is coming up from Memphis. Let's go to Mike Tirico in Tempe, Arizona. Mike? Bob and Mike, thank you. Joined by Craig James, Lee Corso has not been a good bowl season yet for the Pac-10 and Stanford here in a nine-point hole. Coming up, our halftime report from Tempe will have word and comment on the new coach at Oklahoma, who replaces Howard Schnellenberger, a Sports Center update, a Peach Bowl preview, and as for the Fiesta Bowl, we're going to talk about the defensive backs who will be a key factor in this game in three days. Our halftime score at the Liberty Bowl, Pirates by nine. East Carolina University, the third largest university in North Carolina, was built on the foundation of excellent teaching. Today, that heritage is reflected in unexcelled diversity of learning opportunities encompassing the future as well as the past. Throughout the campus and beyond, East Carolina is teaching its students to think, to create, and to welcome the challenges of tomorrow. Well, nothing will get you singing the blues quicker than a few turnovers in Memphis, Tennessee. We're at the 1995 Liberty Bowl, and it's halftime. We're getting ready for the second half, and right now, East Carolina leads it by a score of 16 to 7 over Stanford and the Cardinals had a few problems in the first half Mike they've given the ball up three times yep. and it has cost them 10 points Well, you look at both these teams they made a living this year at creating turnovers both plus seven but what happened in the first half clearly advantaged East Carolina plus three and when you put that together with some of the crazy <laughs> things the Pirates do on the football field it can spell disaster for you if you're the opposing team and certainly they've pulled a few gadgets out of the bag so far well they've had three gadget plays in the first half two of them worked really pretty special watch what happens here a little reverse pass they're trying to throw it right here with Jason Nichols it's not there that's the one that didn't work now watch what happens right here 
Watch that guy. The ball's going to be snapped, handed to Galloway. Here we go the other way. Watch 13. They went that way, Kimo Sabi. <laughs> it's just Galloway goes the other way. And then my favorite of the half, stop it right here. Look at this guy. That's number 41. He's a running back, Jeff Bird. He's not used to playing option. Mitchell Foreman puts a little shake and bake on him. Big play, first down. That led to a field goal. And Bob, 10 points off turnovers in the first half. And a few moments ago on the field here at the Liberty Bowl, the biggest stars and stripes in the world was unfurled. It covered nearly the entire football field. Betsy Ross sure was busy putting that one together. And then some fireworks came shooting out of the flag and a great halftime spectacle to wrap up the halftime show with both the ECU and Stanford bands doing their thing a little bit before that. Nice job by the folks who put on the St. Jude Liberty Bowl here in Memphis. And you know, it's America's only bowl game that grants its title to a children's medical research hospital. The St. Jude Children's Hospital has been a mainstay in Memphis for many, many years. The name Danny Thomas comes to mind, the great late entertainer who is affiliated with the St. Jude Children's Hospital and a lot of good they do in the community. And thankfully, this bowl does a lot good for them in return. Second half about to get underway, and let's check in downstairs with Sam Crenshaw. All right, Bob, just got through talking with both coaches before they came back out onto the field. Coach Tyrone Willingham of Stanford obviously upset about the turnovers in, uh, that has affected them in the first half of this game, but also proud of the way his defense played in the red zone, and that is something that has bothered Steve Logan of East Carolina. Frustrated that his offense couldn't finish the deal off uh, inside the red zone. But he does like the play of Chad Holcomb. He got the long field goal early. He feels like that confidence could pay off later in the game. Well, right now, the junior out of Smyrna, Georgia, has to be the game's MVP. First downs are even. Rushing goes the way of the Pirates, as does the passing and total yardage. But the big bottom line is the difference in this game, Mike. Turnovers and rushing yards. Plus three in the turnovers. That's the game right there. And remember, Stanford, 41 yards rushing. They're most effective when they rush for 140 yards in a game. So they're well underneath that right now. Stanford won the toss a while ago. So they received in the first half, and they will kick it away in this half with Eric Abrams. There's the stat right there. They're six and one when they rush for over 140 yards. The one game where that didn't hold true was UCLA. Mitchell Galloway and Daryl Jones. They kick away from both of them. And Mitchell Galloway will take the touchback. And from the 20, the Pirates will get that pro set offense started against the 4-3 defense of Bill Harris, the defensive coordinator, and Tyrone Willingham of Stanford. Stanford's most recent bowl game was the 93 blockbuster when they knocked off Penn State. This is the second straight year for East Carolina here, and as we said earlier, their fourth bowl game since becoming a Division I football team. Little give to Jarris McPhail on the first play from scrimmage of the second half. Off the right side, and not much there because Jason White, the left end, was waiting. That's their bear defense, what Stanford calls their bear defense. Look up the top of the screen. That's Josh Mazden, the free safety, up to make it an eight-man front. A little bit of a zone blitz concept. Nothing's there. That's a good call by the Stanford defensive coordinator, Billy Harris. McPhail's now run the ball 12 times for 43 yards. Josh Madsen and company getting ready for second down and nine. Jason Nichols, the motion man. Randall keeping and winging it straight ahead. That's Mitchell Galloway. And that throw was right on target. Maybe he threw a few darts in the locker room at halftime, Mike, to get those passes where they should be because Marcus did not throw the ball as well in the first half as we know he can. Well, they opened up the game with two bootlegs, and you see they open up the second half, same thing. Play action, fake to McPhail. Now look at number one on the left of your screen. He's wide open as well as Galloway. He could have delivered the ball deep or short, two men wide open. But they're going to bring it back. I think they're going to get uh, ineligible linemen downfield, which often happens on play action bootleg. And that's a tough call because that's now down and distance. It'll be second and long. And it'll make it second and 14 as the ball goes back to the 16-yard line. 
to try and get about half of that 16 back in a makeable third down situation. Straight drop, and a look to the right. On target he was to Scott Richards at the tight end. And Scott Richards with his third catch of the day. And his 36th of the year. Now let's check it. It's not number 90. It's number 80, Larry Shannon. And Shannon will have his first grab of the day after catching 24 during the regular season. We just talked about how you want to get half back on second and 16. It's now third and eight. That's exactly what they wanted, a makeable third down situation. Single back very deep. Yes, he did. That was Kwame Ellis, step for step, hand for hand, with Troy Smith with a chance to grab that low fastball. That was a nickel blitz to the right of your screen. Corey Hill is blitzing. And just a bad read by Crandall and the receiver. Crandall does not even see Kwame Ellis at the top making the break on the football. That's two big plays Kwame Ellis almost had interceptions on. Anthony Bookman back in his own 35. Stanford comes up big. Kwame Ellis, he didn't get the INT, but he gets the touchdown on the block. It looked like Watts coming through to make the block. Nicodemus Watts on the block. And a real shocker for ECU as Stanford comes up big. Stanford blocked four kicks this year. And East Carolina's had an inconsistent snapping game, although that one's fine. But look at Watts just break loose. The ball takes a Sunday hop right into the hands of Kwame Ellis. Take a look from the other side. That's a jailbreak. I mean, he didn't even have to jump for that. Oh, and the extra point missed. You don't see that happen very often That's from the reliable miss. Eric Abrams. It stays 16-13. Ellis, a big play for the touchdown. The Liberty Bowl is brought to you by the all-new Ford Taurus. A look you've never seen from a name you know well. Turnovers have now led to 16 points in this football game. Stanford grabbed six. They missed the extra point, and it's 16-13 here in Memphis as Kwame Ellis took it in. Now, how often do you see Abrams, you mentioned that, miss an extra point? The irony is he actually missed three extra points this year, and he only missed two field goals. You know, a lot of things went wrong in the last minute, Mike. The penalty, the block kick, and the missed extra point. What might happen on this kickoff return? Don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> Mitchell Galloway at his own seven. There it is. He gets away from a wave of tacklers, and he's out near the 40-yard line. They should have had him back around the 25. Corey Hill finally with the tackle after a 32-yard kickoff return. We talked yesterday with Tyrone Willingham. He, more than anybody, knows the importance of special teams. Well, I think with my background with Diddy Green, and I think that it was also the case at, at Stanford when I was there before, that we place a high priority on special teams. We look at it as very much a third of our football game. He was with Dennis Green, Stanford 89-91, to 91, with the Vikings in Minnesota 92 through last year. Named coach December 9th of 94 upon the... Resignation of Bill Walsh. Up top they go, near sideline. And the intended receiver, Larry Shannon. It's short and deep coverage that time. A strong safety, Swinton, did a good job coming over the top. Elias Swinton, number nine. A junior out of West Hills, California. You know, we just played that bite by Coach Willingham talking about special teams being one-third of the game. It really shows his NFL background, the special interest they put on special teams. They had a couple of practices this year, only special teams, no offensive defense. On second down, it's Crandall with play action. Down to the left of wow. Great play. And it's picked off right in front of the bench, and guess who? It's <laughs> Kwame Ellis again. 
He took it right away from Troy Smith. And Kwame Ellis has his third interception of the year. You know what? That was his toughest play of the day. That was a great catch. He dropped two other ones. He had a much easier chance at But what a great play. Watch the break on the football here by Kwame Ellis. Big play guy in the secondary. Crandall steps up, throws the gun. Look at the catch stepping in front. Boy, that was a tough play. Steps right in front of freshman Troy Smith. Stanford back to work. Great field position at their own 49-yard line. Libiano. Yeah, Mark Libiano says don't send him in here. It was Anthony Bookman straight ahead. And remember, I guarantee you, Willingham at halftime was saying to these guys, there's this turnover number. We've got to run the football. We've got to reestablish the run. Now they got back into the football game on the block kick, but they've got to run the football to win this game. Block punt, not considered a turnover. So it is three to one, but that one comes with a little asterisk next to it. Oh, strong throw by Mark Butterfield to the 40-yard line of East Carolina for Brian Manning. It required a tackle by David Hart, the free safety. Deep curl. You know, the, the two passes he's thrown best today were the deep curls, and that shows you how strong his arm is. Steps up, big fella, drills it right between the numbers. Good tackle, good catch. That shows you, that showcases right there what Butterfield does best. And the Mike, that's the man to throw it to. Manning is the man who the coaches say backs up the secondary because he's so explosive. Anthony Buckman off the left side. He'll get a couple. Now that's very indigenous to what they like to do offensively, setting up their blocks. Brad Badger, who's a great athlete, pulls out in front right there. Use him an awful lot in the pulling and running game. Ball is at the 37. It'll be second down and seven for Tyrone Willingham's Stanford Cardinal. They're starting to get some total yardage now. Didn't have much at halftime. 123. showing blitz and right there is Mark Libiano that's that zone blitz concept we've talked about running down what they'd like to do they get eight people up tight and they're gonna bring Libiano in a host if you watch Libiano right there bang defeats the block and then defeats the runner that was Jocko point of attack right there wow number 403 that tackle by the senior out of PA the guy's 235 pounds. He runs a 4740, benches 350, squats 550. Stay out of his play. Four out of nine is Stanford on third down today. This is a third and ten. Here they come. 101 up top, and it's overthrown down near the five yard line. That's good coverage. Brian Manning, the man who stretches the secondary, had Dwight Henry with him from right corner. You, you just made a good comment, Bob, about stretching the secondary. They got exactly what they wanted, one-on-one -on -one coverage on Dwight Henry, but Henry runs a 4-4-40 himself. See, he had two track guys right there running for the goalpost. Look at it right here. Henry's all over him. Good coverage. Kevin Miller, the punter, will take over after Manning couldn't reach that one. Jason Nichols inside his own 10, the lone return man for East Carolina. Looking for that far side. Ball hits, fair catch. Between the 9 and the 10. 29 on the kick. A three-point game early still in the third quarter. Third quarter, Liberty Bowl. It's East Carolina on top, 16-13. We've got a great hoops game for you later tonight. Later, 1 o'clock. How about that? It's the championship of the Rainbow Classic from Honolulu, where the Orange Men will take on the Minutemen. Syracuse and UMass tonight, tomorrow morning, if you will, at 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, we haven't forgotten about hoops this week. First down at the 10. Harris McPhail, the ball carrier for the Pirates. This game may be not as high scoring as many did expect. Now, both coaches thought this game would be very 
high scoring but Mike so far it's been a wild bowl season. How about that copper bowl the other night Texas Tech and Air Force 55 to 41. This has been an abnormally high scoring season for the bowl and we really expected that today. And by the way the Pac-10 still looking for a win number one. Huh? Oh and two and in some trouble here. A little pressure on Stanford maybe. Because of the failures of UCLA and Washington. Oh. A big hit. Linwood DeBrew holding on. DeBrew's a sophomore out of Newport News, and delivering the news was Leroy Pruitt on that corner. That's his second big hit of the day. Three step drop. He knew they were bringing some heat. Bang out to the flat. Watch the hit right here. That's a good job to hold on to that football. But when you're a defensive back and you see that guy extend up in the air and the ribs exposed, it's like Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Even on the 30th, huh? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Take it any day. Third down and three. This is a big down for East Carolina. This is a choice down for them. Run pass, but they've got trips to the field. It's a pass. Randall looking right all the way. On the run, throws it. And it's caught by Jason Nichols. And that'll be good enough. And to get to the 20, they're at the 22. The right side complete to number one, Jason Nichols. And they needed a first down there. It's interesting. Neither coach we talked to yesterday thought this game would be high scoring, Mike, and it's because they both know each other so well. Trips to the field here, first and ten. Randall, quarterback draw, fights off one hit. Can't break the tackle of Josh Madsen, who snuffed it out and came up quickly from free safety. Taking the tackle for the Cardinals, number 45. Steve Logan of East Carolina talking about his expectations for scoring in this game. I don't think that it'll be up and down the field. I think for this reason, when I'm sure when Coach Willingham got his team in preparation for us and began running our plays at his defense, their defensive coordinator said, this is just like Stanford. Interesting comment. And I think he's right. They are similar in a lot of ways, except Carolina will take a little more dramatic approach in certain kicking situations. Off the right side, Jarris McPhail, Jason White on the left end to meet him. What East Carolina needs here, Mike, they're up by three. Stanford has the momentum. They got to put a bunch of first downs together here and keep the football for a while. Well, they've already done a good job getting it out of their own nine yard line where they started on this drive and recognizing Stanford's blitzing to the front side. They've run weak side back into the boundary successfully. First down at the 33. Checking off, unusual to get a different look here. It's not the show. Nothing much there for McPhail. Pete Swanson and the Cardinal were not full. Little cat and mouse here with the coordinators. There's Billy Harris. Said his mom wanted to see him on the sideline, so he wasn't going up in the booth today. A solid football coach. Assistant in Michigan since 86. By the way, Billy Harris has been now to 13 straight balls. There it is. Harris doing a great job. The zone blitz concept one more time. Second down and 11. Nice catch on a pass out to the left flat. Grabbing it there was number 88, Sean Richardson. Backs up Scott Richards at tight end. When we talk about recognition with Marcus Crandall, he's got to understand what Stanford's showing him. Up tight, number 45, Josh Madison has snuck up again. They're in that eight-man bear defense. Reads it well, sees he's got the flat. Nice job of recognition on that play. on the last couple of plays. He's a guy that they thought might step up in this game, and he makes a couple of good defensive plays here in the third quarter for Stanford. A big fella dislocated his shoulder last game of the year against California. He was back practicing this week. 6'5", 305. Broke his foot last year on the track team. 
Low snap, but fortunately for ECU, not much of a rush. Levine gets it away and gets a great bounce, and that'll get the ball out of bounds at the 22-yard line of Stanford. Ball goes over to the Cardinal with a special guest. Let's check in on the sideline with Sam Crenshaw. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. I'm joined now by Jim Rout, who is the mayor of Shelby County for about 15 months. But you've been involved with this game for a number of years. Long time. I've got a, a great association with the board, having been a board member and uh, as a volunteer. And I want to thank all the volunteers, by the way, for making this a great event again. Of activity, something for everybody to do here this week. Well, we think it's important we have something that, for the taste of everyone, we had rodeos, as you know, we had parades, we had fun fest coaches luncheons we had uh, party on Beale Street for all those folks who want to go to the clubs really important to be a real good host to those people we've had a great time this week looks like we got quite a game brewing here is there one particular game that sticks out in your mind of this series that was the best one well I guess it's the one would have to stick out in a lot of people's mind is Bear Bryan here back in the 80s uh, right before he passed away the bear was great it was really a lot of people in this region of the nation loved him very much and so that was one that probably was tremendous but I must say we've had an awful lot of great Liberty Bowls today with these two teams Stanford and East Carolina showing it's a real tight game going in the final quarter all right coach I would say coach thanks so much for spending some time with us thanks for the hospitality this week thank you for being here we want you back again next year all right let's go back up top to Bob hey you can call him coach That's coach all right. Coach Routh, the new mayor. Well, he's got us in the fourth quarter already. <laughs> we still have 550 remaining in the third, but the folks in Memphis have done a great job entertaining the two teams, all their followers, and providing us with a good game so far. Hey, you know what? The, the coach or the mayor or whatever, he had a pretty good voice, Bob. You better watch yourself. Yeah, I know. It's pretty good. I know. Two tight ends on third down and one for the Cardinal. Just outside their own 31 yard line. Well, they usually go to Adam Salina in that situation. The 6'3, 260 pounder turned his way to first down territory. They had to get beyond the 32. Watch the line surge. Pretty good penetration. 95 Darden. He did his job. He just didn't get a whole lot of help. And when you got 260 pounds, it's tough coming off a block to make that tackle. Good job by the nose guard, Travis Dart. I don't think Mark Butterfield is convinced they didn't make it, but now evidently he is. It'll be fourth down. Are they going to go for it here? Wow. Five minutes remaining in the third quarter. They're down by three. It's not like they're Barry trying to make Switzer. a big deficit here. Barry Switzer, where are you? Watching nervously, maybe. I tell you, if he made it, it's only because great Camella might have pushed him from behind to make it. Good call. Camella came in and tried to push the pile. The Pirates think they stopped. Oh, man, is that taking a chance? on your own 32-yard line early in the third quarter. I mean, even Barry Switzer. It was a lot that. later in the game than this was. Looks like the officials want to measure. Oh, they have to measure on this. I, I really question that call. Whether they make it or not, and I want to say that before the measurement, whether they make it or not, I question the call. No. I don't think you do that at this point in the football game. I really don't. Now, East Carolina has the ball at the 32-yard line of Stanford. Whatever momentum the Cardinal had gathered up since halftime could be lost here in a matter of moments. Camella does a good job pushing the pile, but I'll tell you what, that front line, Walter Scott, Lorenzo West, Darden, great job up front. receivers on first down. They're not going for a quick strike here or anything, are they? And there it is. Team. It is caught. Scott Richards inside the 10. Now against USC, the tight end hurt them in the seam badly because they had a linebacker on the coverage. That's exactly what happens here. Scott Richards in the seam against Michael Hall, the inside linebacker. Crandall does a good job looking front, coming back weak. That's an excellent job right there. 23 yards on the play. First and goal from the nine. Randall with time. Straight ahead. He 
threw it too low. Waiting for the ball was Larry Shannon, and he got a sinker, and he couldn't handle it. And Marcus knows for about the third time today he underthrew what could have been six points. And remember the comment Sam Crenshaw made at halftime, finishing off drives in the red zone. Here it is. First part is vintage Crandall. In the pocket, steps up. There's the break for six, but he underthrows it. That's not vintage Marcus Crandall right there. there off the left side for Jerris McPhail because Mike Hall the weak side inside a linebacker was waiting you know, missed opportunities in tight games will always come back to haunt you that should have been a touchdown two plays ago to Shannon and it goes right back to what the head coach said at halftime we've got to finish off our drives inside the red zone they got a ways to go to finish this one off not good at all on the third down today. Only about 17%. Third down and goal from the seven. Pick play. Randall running out of time, and it's too low on the far sideline. Intended receiver was the fullback, Jarris McPhail. The nickelback, Corey Hill, was right with him. And it'll be time for Chad Holcomb again. Excellent job defensively by Stanford secondary, not trying to come up and contain Crandall. Crandall will get outside the pocket right there, but there's nothing. They played a zone, nothing deep, nothing short. He does a good job just throwing it away. Holcomb perfect today. This from 29 yards. Jason Shell, Ed Crabtree. I'm sorry, 24 yards. They spot it at the 14, and Stanford blocks it. Kwame Ellis, I believe. What a second half he's having. <laughs> and he, he's got it fired up right now. I think that was Kwame off the corner. Haskins and Mike Hall came up the middle also. There he is. Yep. What? I mean, just put his third quarter together, and you've got a good month for a lot of DBs. Hey, during the season, he had two block kicks, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries. The guy's always in the middle of the action. He is a disruptor. Bobby Ellis and Stanford dodges what could have been a game-changing sequence right there. Didn't finish it again in the red zone. Now the Cardinal with the football back down by only three. Butterfield backing, waiting, flags fly, pass deflected, and then trying to grab the deflection was Greg Clark, the tight end. I think we're going to have our first hold, at least offensive hold of the game today. Unless, of course, East Carolina chooses to decline, which I don't think they will. the distance takes it back to the seven yard line take a look in the middle of the screen I think they either get Gainer or Waters right in there in the middle of the screen it's Brad Badger that'll make it first and 17 draw play and they're going to get good yardage out to the 17 maybe the 18 and Mike Mitchell came within a step or two of breaking that a lot farther whenever you get a situation where you're first in, in long yardage or second long you're trying to get half back and that's why you see screen that's why you see draw that's why you see the intermediate moves don't get greedy on first down good job by Stanford and David Hart the free safety made a diving ankle tackle there <laughs> that kept him from getting about another 10 yards. And Mike Mitchell was one of the most highly recruited players in the country three years ago at high school. In Phoenix. Butterfield waiting. Got to get rid of it. Oh. And it is picked off. It's number eight for ECU. That's Kelvin Suggs. He's the nickelback. Bad decision by Mark Butterfield throwing the football late. Suggs is a redshirt freshman out of Kinston, North Carolina, and that's his first career INT. Mm. That was 
was a blitz situation with man-to-man -man coverage. Butterfield broke outside. Foreman with the pressure. The ball was thrown late and no problem for Kelvin Suggs. See the blitz set number seven, Foreman underneath, keeping contained. That's why the ball's thrown. And there's Suggs stepping right in front of the tight end, Greg Clark. Now the pendulum goes back to ECU. When will they take advantage of this? I mean, they're getting all the breaks, but they're, you know, you, you get the feeling that the team that's ahead right now is the one that's living on borrowed time. <laughs> You've got to sooner or later take advantage of all these opportunities. I'll tell you what, Jarvis McPhail right there. How about the second effort on that play? Six feet, 203 pounds. It took about five guys to bring him down. He's deceptively strong. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter. 16-13, East Carolina. Watch play action here. He's checking off. outside gets the first down down to the 12 maybe the 11 Mike Hall the inside linebacker had to rope him down East Carolina's got a little bit of momentum right now once again they're going weak side with the run doing a good job Ron Suttup on the right side taking his man outside watch the cut in the hole right there does a great job Kwame Ellis had nothing but air on the cut he made a pretty good cut just to get outside with a big pile of bodies in front of him with a minute 15 remaining it's first down at the 12. Skating and slipping his way through. Daryl Jones, the redshirt freshman. He had his biggest game of the year in the last game when they beat Memphis 31-17. He toted the ball 16 times for 63 yards. And they really think he's the future here, the redshirt freshman. They recruited three very talented redshirt freshmen. Daryl Jones might have the quickest burst of all three of them. Second down and seven at the nine. Got to finish here. inside the five Josh same guy Johnson. you're right same guy little different cut that's why he's such a good back he took it backside saw what was going on in front of him and cut it back to the main part of the field Jones is very quick here we go he starts out front side sees what's happening feels the pressure and takes it backside Stanford gets caught with a lot of people on Too late. the field the ball is intercepted in the end zone by Leroy Pruitt, but flags fly. East Carolina got the playoff so quickly, there must have been about 15 Stanford players on the field. But the key to that play, and I don't know what's going to happen yet with the flags, but the key to the play is Crandall can't throw that football unless it's early. He threw it way too late, allowed Pruitt to break on the football. The play was open early. The illegal substitute on the defense oh. at the distance of the goal. How big a play is that? You know, they looked a lot like the Stanford band on that play. <laughs> Illegal substitution. I don't want to take his temperature right now. Here it goes. They got people running everywhere here because East Carolina snapped it so quickly. Yeah, they had about three guys off sides, too, trying well, to get to the side. What they were trying to do was match up with the personnel that East Carolina had in the game. That was a smart play by Crandall, getting them up to the line of scrimmage and snapping the football. Now, that's a big, you know, here, talk about a turnaround, Bob. Instead of an interception, you've got third and goal from the two. You've got two opportunities to pop it in here. Now they can get a first down without scoring. Now the clock has expired for the end of the third quarter. The officials are calling the Pirates back. An untimed down is coming up. Isn't this a Canadian Football League rule or something? Well, we're on the right field for it. <laughs> With the now defunct Memphis team. The only problem is the end zone's a little too small. <laughs> is at 15 minutes getting ready for the fourth quarter third down it says third and two on the scoreboard at the four but the ball is spotted just outside the two so right it, it looks like it's third and inches 
it, it is because it was third and four half the distance takes it down to the two two tight ends in the game heavy package Nothing there for Jarris McPhail. The Cardinal defensive front comes up big on the last play of the third quarter. We've got some high drama waiting when the final 15 minutes gets underway here in a moment. A rather wild third quarter of play. 16-13 in the Liberty Bowl. East Carolina still on top. East Carolina is going to go for it on fourth and two. Good call for two reasons. They kick a field goal, they're only up six, and even if they miss it, it puts Stanford back on their own four-yard line. I like the aggressive call right here. Trips to the field. Watch the rollout that way. Crandall from the shotgun. Looking left. Looking right. Throwing. Josh Madsen, Jarris McPhail, the man who was trying to catch the football. That is the third time today they've gone for it in fourth down in Stanford's territory and come up empty. Critical, critical situations. Now Crandall looking front side, nothing's there, comes backside, sees McPhail, but Madsen comes over the top. Wow. I wonder what Billy Harris thought of that one. Well, you'll get to see. Yeah, that's his reaction. <laughs> his defense has come up big in critical red zone situations. Yeah, there's Josh, who was a freshman in 1991, played seven games, went to Mexico on a mission the following two years. He's a junior now at the age of 22, and he made a very experienced play there. Greg Comella, the junior running back, gets him a little bit of breathing room. Whenever they get short yardage situations or the tough yards, Camella goes from fullback to tailback. Very aggressive, tough kid with a little more quickness than you think. Mike, whoever loses this game is going to moan all winter long about missed opportunities. No question, and it goes both ways. Six yards on first down. It'll be second and four. First minute of the fourth quarter. There's a pitch and a missed tackle. But it slowed the play down. Anthony Bookman had one of the hearts after him. That's Darren, number 22. Well, we've got a good ball game here today. And how about the beach ball from Atlanta tonight? It's number 18, Virginia, against them dogs. Tiki Barker of Virginia, their junior running back, averaged 116 yards a game. And it's the final game for Ray Goff at the helm of Georgia. It's the ACC and the SEC tonight in the Peach Bowl from the Georgia Dome at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Tiki Barber can play, and so can his brother who starts a defensive back, Ronda. Third down and nine. Butterfield in the end zone. Near side, Anthony Bookman slanting out of bounds at the 12. Short of the first down, good job reacting up by the East Carolina defense. Third and nine situation will pick up about seven. So if you don't get the first down, your defense does the job of containment here. This is a little bit of West Coast offense right back at you. Two men run underneath. Tailback Bookman flares outside. Correct read by the quarterback, but he's not going to get enough for the first down. Great effort, though, by Bookman. There's the read. In the stretch. Big kick coming up for Kevin Miller. He'll be just over the goal line when he lets this one go. He hangs it up beautifully. Fair catch signal at the 46-yard line by Jason Nichols. So Stanford dodges the Pirates. The Bucks have it back after a 42-yard kick up by three. Sixteen thirteen, East Carolina leads Stanford. Thirteen twenty to go in a tight, tight ninety-five Liberty Bowl. East Carolina goes on offense. Their offensive coordinator is Todd Berry. 
taking a little sip of the drink there. He's heading for normal Illinois to become the head coach at Illinois State of the Gateway Conference. Only 35 years old, already renowned as an offensive mind. Illinois State wanted an offensive guy. And interestingly enough, they've already named their new offensive coordinator for next year, and that's existing wide receivers coach Doug Martin, who you see right there. So this is the last game for Todd Berry as offensive coordinator. Doug Martin's a Kentucky guy, graduated from there in 86. Todd Berry out of Tulsa, played for John Cooper there in the early 80s, class of 83. They've got good field position at the 46, but tripped up in the backfield was Jarris McPhail. Great penetration. Jason White from the left defensive end. The offense's biggest enemy is that quick penetration when you're trying to run an ISO play. Good job by Jason White. Stanford, a veteran front four. Except for Carl Hansen, who's a sophomore. Hebert, Swanson, and White are all seniors. But they really like Hansen. They think he's going to be an all-pack 10 and, and play the NFL someday. Second down and 10. Randall with lots of time. Airs it out. And oh. there was some contact, but there is not a flag. <laughs> Kwame Ellis on Larry Shannon. <laughs> and Kwame went over to the ref and patted him on the butt and said, good call, coach. Way to go. Now, that's a situation where if your feet get tangled up as a defensive back, you usually get away with it. They will call the penalty when your hands get involved. And that time, both their feet got tangled, but no hands. Kwame Ellis is in his first year as a starter in his senior year. He's out of Oakland, California. What a difference maker he's been. A big play man for Stanford all year long. Third down and 10. They are two out of 14 on third down today. Straight ahead. It's a bullet for Mitchell Galloway. That's one of Crandall's best throws of the day. And they made the right read against that two deep shell. The two deep stayed two deep. They ran the seam pattern to Galloway, and the key there is the timing. He got the football there before the safety could react. Play action, he sees the safety separate. Good job. Delivers the ball on time before the safeties can get there. Josh Madsen, the tackle, his seventh of the day, but a 22-yard play for ECU. They snuck late into that bare defense, the eight-man front with Josh Madsen coming up from free safety to be the eighth, eighth man. Clock running down to the 12-minute mark remaining at the 1995 Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Billy Harris there having a great battle with offensive coordinator Todd Burry back and forth in and out of different defenses. Second down and nine. Out and up. Crandall wins it. It's low. Jason Nichols, the intended receiver. Good quarterback pressure by Jason White, who's having a big game, number 91, for Stanford. It looks like he's hurt. He's down on the sidelines. And they've had some real problems this year in the defensive front, keeping their people healthy. Hanson's the only one that's played all 11 games. Jason White has had all kinds of problems on and off this year. John Hebert, an early knee injury. Pete Swanson, the shoulder that Mike talked about earlier. We've got some rain falling in Memphis now. Look out. They got him on third down and nine. Corey Hill coming from Nickelback. That's about the fifth or sixth time they've run the nickel back on blitz. Number 17, Corey Hill. Here we go. Straight five-step drop. From the back side comes the nickel, and Marcus Crandall never even saw him. That's a first sack this year. Matt Levine. That one's not going to get much yardage. That ball is bouncing around outside the 25. The line of scrimmage was the 39. Ouch, a 13-yard kick. 11 minutes to go. Here in Memphis, we've gone from sun to clouds to rain, and it's still too close to call. Liberty Bowl is brought to you by the more than 1,200 AutoZone stores across America.
AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts, and by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. I think that's the trolley Tom Cruise took when the firm was chasing him through downtown Memphis. Welcome back, Bob Carpenter, Mike Mayock, and Sam Crenshaw at the Liberty Bowl. 16-13 ECU with 11 minutes to go. Near side, it's Anthony Bookman making a little slant up field. He'll be out of bounds at the 35. An unhappy bowl season for the Pac-10 so far. Iowa really laid one on Washington yesterday after earlier in the week, Glenn Mason made his dramatic announcement and the Jayhawks took care of UCLA. And they were two ugly games. I'm not just talking about losses. They were ugly. There's still some pressure on Tyron Williams to cling on to the old Pac-10. Bookman off the right side. And of course, if they don't win this one, Southern Cal is going to have all kind of pressure on them when they face Northwestern. Probably uh, almost everybody would be rooting for Northwestern except for USC fans in that one. And I don't understand that one. I mean, you've got the number three team in the country playing the number 17 team, yet the number 17 team is favored when Northwestern has just spanked everybody they've played this year with the expansion and exception of Miami of Ohio. Western, the top story in college football this year, but Stanford has to be right up there in the top two or three as well with their resurgence. Anthony Buckman again to carry, and Aaron Black from the rush end position, number 94 with the stop. He's a Juco guy, played two years at Waldorf in Iowa, his native state. Split some time with Roderick Coleman, the true freshman, on the left side out there. The guy that really made the play, though, was the penetration of the nose guard, true freshman Travis Darden. I mean, this guy is an athlete. He started the first game at outside linebacker, the next 10 at nose guard. Yeah, that was against Tennessee, and he was around to stay after playing well against the Bombs. Walters, boy, that front three, front four is playing well. Attack a lot of play, number 96, Walter Scott. Walter Scott's a senior. Penetration, they're slanting the line. Great job. The fullback, Camella, does not pick up the slant. Two big plays in a row for East Carolina. Defensively leads 3rd and 12. At their own 34. Clock running with 9.25 remaining. Three wide receivers for the Cardinal, and Mark Butterfield will stop it here. And they've got their nickel package in the game. Kelvin Suggs in a corner. Now there's there's a timeout you don't want to you don't want to use with nine minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. Wow. Timeout for us as well. Still a three point game. It's been that way for a long time now. Stanford down by three facing a third and 12. Now Mike we know their tendency on third and short. They throw 80 <laughs> percent of the time. They've got to throw here. Who do we look for. I think you might see Manning vertically and then one of the underneath guys Harris or Dunn running a deep in route. Big play in this game right here. Butterfield the drop flushed out Screen. a short throw. It's Bookman out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Well I give him some credit on that third and 12 tough to pick up 12 on screen and I think he did. We'll see where they spotted. They had to get just beyond the 46. Yeah I think he's uh, going to be about a third, short two thirds of a yard short man. Yeah. Now this brings up an interesting situation. Same situation earlier in the third quarter. They go for it deeper in their own territory. So what do you do now. Butterfield's in the game. Officials have stopped the clock momentarily. Yeah, I thought they were going to go down the field. This is a good call, though. Butterfield holds it, holds it, delivers late to Bookman. That's a good job by the quarterback. Now let's see if he can finish it. Puts his head down, runs over the defensive back. That's about as good an effort as you can make right there by Bookman. Yeah, he was hit back at about the 41-yard line and managed to get to the 45 before he went out. It shows you at 5'9", 180, how strong this kid is. I'm a little surprised they're measuring. It didn't appear to be that close, and it's at least a length of a football short. Well, if you're going to be consistent here, you go for it. He went for it earlier, and look, they're going to punt. See, I don't, that, I don't understand the, the inconsistency there. 
the sophomore out of Homewood, Alabama. Jason Nichols back inside his own 20. And they went for it earlier, deeper in their own territory, and now they're in the 45 and they're going to kick it. See if they try and draw them off sides and it's quick now. Nothing fancy. Ball hangs up high. Fair catch at the 13 by Jason Nichols. So we'll turn around and go the other way with 9.03 remaining after a pretty solid 41 yard kick by Kevin Miller of Stanford. Now everybody compares that young man Marcus Crandall to Jeff Blake and justifiably so. I don't think he's had a great day today but look at some of the stats career wise between the two of them. Completion very close yards Crandall has beaten him. He still has another year to go and he'll catch him in touchdowns next year. First down at the 14 for the Pirates of East Carolina. 903 remaining. It failed. Big room. He's out to the 30. Kwame Ellis had to come up from corner. Two really good blocks that time. Jake Gilray, left guard on the initial block, and then downfield wide receiver block on Kwame Ellis. Watch 73 coming right at you. This is a good looking football play. There's the seal on Batson, the break right there to the outside, and there's the block on Ellis. Excellent job there by Jason Nichols. Good job there. First down at the 30. Galloway, the motion to the near side. And snuffing that one out in a hurry was Kylie Wong, the sophomore out of Eugene, Oregon, who spells Carl Hansen at that right side. You know, he's an interesting guy. He was the most highly recruited player in the state of Oregon two years ago. Stanford won in a recruiting battle. And he told me last night, his room was right next to mine. He told me last night that for some reason, he only plays well against Oregon and Oregon State. <laughs> so, so the coaching staff told him that this, this team was East Carolina slash Oregon. Well, you know, it's raining, so he should pretend those are ducks on the other side. Second down and 13 at the 27. Bang. The pocket collapses. There's a flag on the play. David Carter got there. Carter backs up Pete Swanson, a defensive tackle. He's number 96 out of Flagstaff, Arizona. Remember, they've had some people hurt. Jason White went down a little while ago. Friendly is declined. Third Good job by David Carter, and the sack will hold right there in the middle. Little twist right there, and Carter will break free. Rain is coming down a lot harder now in Memphis. Eight minutes, five seconds remaining in the football game. This is a situation if you're ECU, you're looking for some first downs here and eat up a lot of that clock, but they've got a third and 21 right now. Gonna look at it from a free safety perspective. Randall running out of room and time, and he just dumps it upfield. Good job by the Stanford secondary of containment downfield and John Hebert had a little quarterback pressure to go with it. They've really done a good job containing Crandall on the corner. These big guys inside for Stan Stanford smart enough to understand you've got to keep contained. Watch 71 flash into your picture right there. Good job by Hebert the inside defensive tackle. And drop off in, in a punt return. Matt Levine, the kicker. He hits a good-looking punt. Down to the 39. Taken there by Bang. Anthony Bookman. He goes backwards to go forward. They will mark him out of bounds at the 45. Seven minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Stanford with a good defensive stand. Now they get the ball back. No flag on that block. Three-point game. It was a perfect day for a football game three hours ago. It's raining hard now in Memphis, Tennessee. East Carolina leading 16-13. Their defense goes to work against Mark Butterfield, Anthony Bookman, and the Stanford offense with 7.28 remaining. 
Blitz on the corner. Nice play on the corner by Aaron Black. 6'4", 255, and he elevated well. Hey, give Paul Jett, this defense, defensive coordinator in the defense of East Carolina, some credit for staying aggressive and not just trying to protect the lead. They're bringing people off the corner on both sides. Watch number 94, Aaron Black, extend his hands. Good job. Aaron Black had an emergency appendectomy in late July. The doctor said he wouldn't even play maybe the first month of the season. He was suited up and playing in the opener. <laughs> when they took on Tennessee in Knoxville. Here they come again, off the corner. Second and 10. Man to man. He wants to air it. And down around the 30 yard line, Brian Manning could not get there. It has not been a big day at all for Stanford's two primary receivers, Manning and Mark Harris. Let's check in with our weatherman now down on the sideline. Sam, how's it getting down there? Well, it's getting a little uh, west. The field's getting a little chopped up, a little beaten up. We started out with Chamber of Commerce weather, and of course it's deteriorated a bit. A little cold, a little rainy. It's going to have a definite impact on how this thing ends up. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, it's now air traffic control delay weather here. Third down and 10. Butterfield trip from behind. First man to touch him was number seven, Morris Foreman. And then Travis Jordan finished him off. That was a coverage sack. Great job in the secondary to watch Morris Foreman, number seven. Three plays in a row coming off the corner. Overpowers the running back, Mitchell, who does a poor job. And he flushes him back to Dart. Time to kick for the Cardinal, Kevin Miller again. That guy's an athlete right there. He's my man when I want to fake a punt. Kind of a knuckleball that hits at the 25 and then downed a yard or two further down. And that's where East Carolina will take it after a 34-yard kick. And here it is again, 6.28 remaining. If you can string some first downs together, you've got a chance to waste away the rest of this football game. Coming up tomorrow on ESPN, which is New Year's Eve, the best of our Sunday conversations, a staple of ESPN Sports Center throughout the year. It starts tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Candid personal interviews with the big names in sports from the past year. The best of tomorrow night. Over the 25-yard line goes Jerris McPhail. Good contact down there. Jake Gilray pulling again. Good hit on the middle linebacker, Mike Hall. That's what East Carolina wants to do right now. Run the football, time off the clock, prolong drive. Jarris McPhail, 83 yards on the day. Stanford's going to have to start sneaking into their, their bare package and get some pressure on the running game. Those are tough 83 yards too, Mike, on 23 carries. And that's the tight end, Scott Richards, number 90. Good read by Crandall that time, taking what the defense will give him. Clock keeps running and brings up a very critical third down situation. Now, third and two is what East Carolina calls their, Steve Logan calls his choice down. It's a run or pass, third and two. Third and three, they're 90% pass. They'll run out of the eye here with the tight end, with the up back. Another timeout with 5.06 remaining. Randall didn't like what he saw. He will stop it. They lead by three. Five minutes and six seconds left in the Liberty Bowl. Long distance information. Give me Memphis, Tennessee. I'm looking for the party. Way in that for me. The city with the soul and the sound that sets you free. Call 1 800 8 Memphis. Well, the numbers we're dialing right now 16 to 13 with 506 remaining. 
Peach Bowl coming up on ESPN tonight. Yeah. Bowl week continues. An impromptu promo. Yeah. Virginia and Georgia tonight. They get to play indoors, though. They're down in two, and they find the tight end, Scott Richards, over the 40-yard line. That'll move the chains. It'll move the clock. And it'll be a big step forward for East Carolina trying to win their first-ever Liberty Bowl. Notice what they did, though. Before the timeout, Marcus Crandall had his power team in. Here's the tight end. All he needs is two yards. Push off the linebacker, turn around, deliver it on time. That's a big play in this football game. They went from power set to their pass set. Smart plug. There's a situation where Jarris McPhail sees the sideline approaching. He puts on the brakes, takes a couple of hits to keep that clock moving. That's called a senior play right there. You understand what needs to happen. You don't just run the daylight all the time. You've got to understand the effect of the ball game. Clock running down under four and a half minutes. Each team with a couple of timeouts remaining in this three-point game. There have been only six points scored in the second half. That was Kwame Ellis's block punt. Got Stanford back in the game at 16-13 a long, long time ago. Good play. On second and ten. It's out to the wing for Galloway. They'll be just across midfield when they wrestle and down. Good job using Mitchell Galloway, the motion man, bringing him all the way across the field. As we let this run, he comes across the field, three-step drop, throws it on time, wide open in the flat. You know, Bob, what I like about this is they're not just pulling their horns in and saying we're going to run the clock, and they're staying with their normal offense, moving the chains, trying to take advantage. Galloway, pretty good average on those three catches. During the regular season, he caught 46 balls for over 600 yards. His next catch will be his 50th. Twisting and turning his way, the senior out of Clinton, North Carolina, Jarris McPhail, who closes out a great career. You know, he had a lot of pressure on him. He was replacing ECU's all-time number one runner, Junior Smith, who's now in the CFL, who gained 3,745 yards and ran for 28 touchdowns in his Pirate career. Let me tell you something. Junior can play. Jarris McPhail can also, but Junior Smith is a player playing with Shreveport now, one of the quickest tailbacks I've seen in the last few years. Second down and seven, under three minutes to go. Here comes Strong single, nickel blitz, 17 on the corner. That's Corey Hill. Took a lot of time there. Marcus tried to get out of it when he saw what was happening. Too much time, and Steve Logan hates to have that happen. Don't want to stop the clock there. <laughs> well, that's twice now. On the offense, five yards. 245 remaining when they stop it because of the penalty after they stopped it earlier with a timeout. They got the ball with 628 remaining, so they've used almost four minutes on this drive. Each team with two timeouts remaining. And this is the seventh play of the drive coming up, Mike. You don't ever want to help the defense out in that kind of situation and take too much time. Inside the 30, inside the 25. It took the nickel back. Corey Hill, who wanted to blitz last time, to wrestle him down deep in the secondary. This is the most impressive drive of the day because it comes under pressure. Your leader, your quarterback, taking control on the bootleg. Here comes the fake. Bootleg, and now watch him throw back to a wide open Mitchell Galloway. That's just an excellent offensive concept. I like the opportunity, the ability to go ahead and be aggressive late in the game. Eighth play coming up. They're chewing up lots of time. 217 remaining. Nice cutback by McPhail. He's inside the 20. Great vision by McPhail approaching the line of scrimmage. You know, Bob, we've talked about that all day. The cutback ability for both these backs for East Carolina, Carolina McPhail and Daryl Jones. 
They're under two minutes away from winning for the first time in Memphis after being shut out 30 to nothing by Illinois last year. They're looking for their first bowl win since the Peach in 92 when they knocked off NC State. the other guy you talked about, the redshirt freshman, Daryl Jones. Stanford has two timeouts remaining. They are going to use the first of those right here. What have we talked about all game is the ability to finish. East Carolina would like more than a field goal as we take a break here, 16-13, East Carolina. Well, that'll be a little better weather than what we're having here in Memphis right now. Bob Carpenter with Mike Mayock, Sam Crenshaw, our spotter Kim Anderson, our stat man Russ Willingham. We've got a minute 23 remaining. East Carolina trying to finish this thing off. Third down and two. Look at uh -oh. Underthrown. <laughs> Corey Hill defending on the corner. That had disaster written all over it. I, I've talked about how I like them being aggressive in that situation, but, but there's a fine line between aggression and poor decision making. You've got to be careful throwing late or behind in the flat. Chad Holcomb is coming onto the field for a huge field goal attempt. It'll be about 34 yards. The holder is Ed Crabtree. Jason Shell, the snapper. This could put this game out of reach. This could go up by nine. Excuse me, by six. He drilled it right through there. So it will take a touchdown and something extra to beat him. 19 to 13 with a minute 15 remaining. And what a day for Chad Holcomb. Not that great during the regular season, Mike. And with the exception of one that got blocked today, he has been just about perfect. The placement was good. So was the kick. Pirates by six. Six-point lead for East Carolina with a minute 15 to go on the field goal by Chad Holcomb again. Tyrone Willingham reacting to, to the field goal. He still knows a touchdown wins it. Look at him. Block it, block it, block it. Oh, man. Oh, Kickoff return. Let's go. <laughs> Field is warm and ready for the last drive of his collegiate career, at least playing in Stanford Red and White. He's heading for the NFL scouting combine, but none of those all star games. David Dunn. Uh oh. He's got some company. He's got some yardage. He's out to the 47. A 40 yard return, and they've got 65 seconds left. It took the kicker to bring him down, Chad Holcomb. Yeah, but the kicker was the one that kicked that low line drive, which made that eminently returnable. He makes the tackle, but he had a poor kick there that sets up the return. You can see Damon Dunn there behind the big wedge. Where, where's the kicker? Where is he? Slide in there. Make the tackle. It's a good lesson. If you kick it low, you'll probably have to tackle somebody. Steve Logan will be on your butt. Butterfield throwing out to the right side. That's the tight end, Greg Clark, into East Carolina territory. Stanford has one timeout remaining as we play down to 50 seconds. The senior quarterback's got to take control now. It's his game. Second down and four. Looking down the middle. And that's Mark Harris. We haven't heard much from the senior out of Brigham City, Utah, all day long. How about East Carolina blitzing man-to-man -man coverage? Bob, they've been aggressive on both sides of the ball here in the last two minutes of the game. Pure blitz man-to-man -man on them. 38 seconds to go in a six-point game. Butterfield flushed out. Get to the sideline. He does. At the 27. 
28 seconds remaining. You've got to like his composure so far here on this last drive. Good job reading the man-to-man -man coverage on the previous play and then getting out of bounds on this play. A coach who waited 17 years to be a head man. A quarterback who waited four years to become a regular. Only threw 51 passes during that time. And now he's put to the ultimate test in his final game in a Stanford uniform. There are two great stories. Willie Ham, one of the best young coaches in the country, following a legend, establishing his own program. Steve Logan can only watch and hope his defense gets it done. Second and eight, out to the near side. At the 21-yard line, it's Mark Harris again. Good hit by David Hart. And a timeout with 20 seconds remaining. It was such a good hit that Mark Harris was shaken up a little bit there. I'll tell you one thing. If you catch the ball anywhere near one of the Hart brothers, you will pay the price. Big interception for a touchdown early. Offensive coordinator Dana Bible does a good job calling the play out here. Mark Harris, now watch the hit right on the shoulder pad. Right there, helmet and shoulder pad, good hit. The Hart brothers will be all over. Offensive coordinator Dana Bible is up in the press box. He was one of the first hires by Tyrone Willingham. He wanted a coach that knew the game, knew his game. He went back to the University of Cincinnati. Also coached with the Bengals, North Carolina State, San Diego State. He's had some pretty good quarterbacks in this time. I mean, he had Dan, Dan McGuire, Eric Kramer. First Dan McGuire, the younger brother of Mark McGuire, the baseball yep. star. The obligatory brother reference. Yes. 20 seconds to go. Far from over is this one. Stanford is out of timeouts. And they, they're out of timeouts, and they've got to put the ball in the end zone. Third down and three. Oh, bad. Into the turf, a low throw, uncatchable. No chance there for Damon Dunn. See, Butterfield is much more comfortable in the pocket standstill quarterback as opposed to the semi roll he was on there. He had to make that pass. It was a very poor effort. Watch him rolling now to his right. Damon Dunn's wide open early. He throws it across his body. Creates a fourth down situation with only 16 seconds left. So you got to get the first here, Carp, and then you got to run another play. Blitz. Across the middle. It is incomplete. incomplete. And East Carolina is going to win it. 19-13 as they hold on fourth down. I tell you, man-to-man -man coverage. Blitz again coming after the quarterback. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage. McDaniel, the best defensive back. on Manning, one of the best wide receivers in the back 10 The ball was a little bit underthrown. And it's going to be a big win for East Carolina. And the Pac-10 will go 0-3 in bowl games. I'll tell you one thing. That's a big step forward for this East Carolina program. When you're an independent, when you don't have a league to play in, you've got to take advantage of your opportunities, and I think they did that today. The Pirates will go 9-3. Stanford will end a fairy tale season. 7 4 and 1 and Steve Logan's team does what it came here to do and that's erase the memory of 1994 in this very stadium under the shoulder pads the kids were wearing t-shirts that read unfinished business and I guarantee you now they're gonna go home to Greenville and feel real good about their football program that's Mike Mayock the world championship of golf is coming up next for Sam Crenshaw as well Bob Carpenter hope you enjoy the 1995 Liberty Bowl Hats off to the Pirates. Goodbye from Memphis.